Black Alpha Network. Home of Black Excellence. Power to the people. You gotta believe first. If you don't believe first, then you ain't gonna never get to where you're trying to get to. I believe. I knew from the beginning I was the best in boxing. From day one. I dreamed it. I wrote it down. I believed it. I surrounded myself with people that, that got it right here. I got 24 hours in a day. Eight hours you sleep. Right? And most people work a nine to five. So eight hours you working. 16 hours. Okay, so we had 16 hours. We got breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we had, what, we had nine, that's 19? Take your hour to get ready. I'm where I'm at because I'm focused. Tunnel vision. I'm focused on what I got to do. I won't deny it. I'm a straight rider. They don't want to fuck with me. Yes, sir. Peace and respect, peace, power, peace, love, and reparations to everybody. Certified black society, certified honey, and certified salutes to the whole FBA family tree. Yes, indeed. Everybody knows how we do it on this side. The best lineage, the best heritage, and we are the culture. That's why we out here putting on a show, and everybody's out here watching us. Everybody's out here hating on us, and everybody's out here trying to be like us. Because when you certify and you on code, then everything else just falls into place. And right now, we in the place. Salute. Salute. And since I got that certified salute, then you know I gots to get that FBA family tree roll call. Yes, indeed. Where you tapping in from? Where you listening at? I need you to put it in the comments, put it in the chat, let everybody know where you from. Represent it. I need your city, town, state, everything. Put it up. FBA family tree, FBA all day. We stand together. And I always say that right here on the Black Alpha Network. We are on fire and we growing every day. But we do it as a collective, never individuals. My brothers and sisters, we stand together. We rise together and we are stronger than ever because we putting our mark on this world. We're making our presence felt. They're never going to go back in time, remix and retwist this era. Fuck no. Can't happen because we are too thorough and we are too precise. And quite frankly, we ain't taking the bullshit. We all game. We focus. We know what we want. And we going out and snatching that shit because they didn't want to give it. Back in the old days, they used to ask, could you hand it over? Back in the old days, they would wish that you would hand it over. Back in the old days, they would pray that you would hand that shit over. Now in this generation, you got two choices. You giving that shit up or you getting that shit took. But either way, it's coming home with certifieds. That's the way it is. Because all it takes is the certified hundred to change the world. They didn't need every last black person to be on code during slavery to get free. They didn't need every last black person during reconstruction to reconstruct. They didn't need every last black person during civil rights era to get civil rights. So we don't need every last black person today to tear shit up. All it takes is the certified honey to change the whole goddamn world. And if you look around, we changing the whole goddamn world in our style. So basically what I'm saying is, is that we are our ancestors' best dreams and we are their worst nightmares. And them motherfuckers going to stay scared because we going to stay on game and we going to do it the certified B-L-A-C-K way salute if you're with me right on smash that like button family and make sure that you subscribe to the black alpha network i appreciate all the love and all the support and we get so much love and support but you know i love you with a passion thank you very much because we are just one big fba family tree and they know how we do love y'all you know how we say foundational black americans see people from a mile away oh, oh i'm sorry excuse me fba sees your ass from a mile away you know how we always say that well, damn it, it must be true. Because every single thing that we say happens, it's going to happen. If we say some shit going to go down, it's going to go down. If we say some shit about to pop off, it pop off. When we say a motherfucker going to get regulated, they get regulated. We say a motherfucker going to get G-checked, they going to get G-checked. You can count on it. That's how thorough we are. Well, when you watch, you see, you examine, you analyze, you spot, you frame. All you see is FBA framing every goddamn body. We done put so many faces on that Summer Jam screen, we gonna have to buy about 10 more of them motherfuckers because that's how many folks violate and then we demonstrate. There's been a whole lot of people running around here 
saying a bunch of bullshit about us because you know they can't see us eye to eye so they got to make things up anytime somebody has to trick you that means they can't beat you anytime somebody got to run and sign little papers and say fba is a hate group they're so mean to us they hate us for no reason Anytime they gotta come up with bullshit like that, that's just motherfuckers who's desperate. And motherfucker who's usually desperate is somebody who can't build for themselves. What I say, foundational black Americans, we build, everybody else stay still. They got a whole goddamn existence based on that. America got a whole policy based on people trying to steal from us. It should be on paper. They should literally make a policy, legislation, bring in the Senate and everybody that just says law. FBA creates and then we steal from them. Because that's all it is. When you look at this country, top to bottom, inside out, all the way around, all you see is people trying to steal from us because they can't get shit on their own. And then when we call them out, they get an attitude about the shit. Well, they're going to be some attitude having motherfuckers because we don't renege off nothing. We don't change to suit motherfuckers' feelings. We ain't out here playing the nice game. See, they used to play the nice game back in the day, and they found out that shit don't work. They used to play the friendly, deadly, winly, we all the world, can't we all get along? Yes, we can. And we said hell to the no. I told you, this generation hit different. This is our time, our day, our moment, and we are seizing it. So, in the midst of us seizing this moment, us regulating, we've been calling out these goddamn tethers for a long time. We've been calling these tethers out. Motherfuckers been getting upset with us all in their tether feelings, all in their tether emotions. They've been seeing tether therapists laying on their couch and shit. Just having whole fucking meltdowns about FBA simply because we said no. Mind you, family, we ain't did nothing to these motherfuckers. It's not like we over there in their country trying to steal. It's not like we over in their country trying to take their holidays, take their heroes, steal things that belong to them. We ain't did a goddamn thing but told these motherfuckers no. That's all. All this shit over N-O. That's it. Foundational black Americans have said a two-letter word. And that shit done set off the whole goddamn country. Fuck that. It done set off the whole earth. Motherfuckers from all around, different villages, different hemispheres, time zones, continents, all got mad because foundational black Americans said a two-letter word. No. Can't have our shit. It's ours. It belongs to us. Go take somebody else's shit. Why don't y'all go over to the dominant society since you love them so much? You come over here trying to act like them and live next door to them. Then why don't you go try to take their shit? Oh, I forgot. Because nobody builds like we do. If you want to come take something, trust and believe you're going to go to the architect. And we are the architect. Understand, foundational black American. Well, every foundation has to have an architect. And we are the architects. You, sister, you are the architect of this foundation. You, brother, you are the architect of this foundation. We are the architects that created the foundation in foundational black America that everybody wants to steal from. And then when they come over here and try to put their little tether paws on it, and we say no, motherfucker, then they get mad. Then they call us a hate group. Then they have a whole message meltdown but there's been some crazy shit going on lately where a lot of these tethers and these pan africans or excuse me scam africans oh they've been going at it now oh they've been fighting left and right oh y'all know i'm heading with this y'all know i'm heading with this i'm about to go there yep dr kubar vasquez we're gonna we're gonna break it down y'all let me cook let me cook let me build we're gonna get it yes indeed we all day every day there have been a whole lot of tether on tether crime there's been scam African on scam African crime. There's been scam African on tether crime. The goddamn fights have been going sideways, diagonal, left and right. Foundation of Black Americans, we just over here with our popcorn watching the whole motherfucking show. See, we always putting on the show, so sometimes we need to just sit back and watch the show. Can I say that one more time? Can I run that back, family? We're always putting on the show, and sometimes we need to just sit back and watch the show. So we got the dominant society on the left fighting the dominant society on the right. We got the Republicans fighting the Democrats. We got the conservatives fighting the liberals. And I'd be damned if we ain't got the Pan-Africans fighting the tethers. Yes, we do. Shit done got real, y'all. You know shit done got real. When Dr. Kubar Vasquez, Mr. Scam African, been running around here living in Disneyland, living in La La Land, Nickelodeon, the Cartoon Network, chasing a Pan-Africanism that never existed. Mind you, Pan-Africanism doesn't exist in Africa and the black and brown coalition doesn't exist in mexico so what does that mean both of them are a lie but you got a lot of motherfuckers used to believe that shit no nah, brother we are africa there is no such thing as an fba what's the fba we all black one day all black people on the planet will all hold on i'm fucking that up let me let me rephrase that i'm saying that shit in the african dialect no nah, that's wrong hell no nah. because most pan-africans they asses live right here in america right next to us yep motherfucker all day long named be larry Till he go home and then he turn into Mr. Lumbumba. <laughs> Motherfucker name be Marquise. And then he turned into Matumbo. 
That motherfucker went from Larry to Lumumba, Marquise to Matumbo, all in a matter of an hour. <laughs> he be talking all that black pride, black stuff, and then his ass go to work, and he's like, yes, boss, please. Uh-huh, I will. Motherfucker live in the suburbs and shit. Nah, homeboy, your ass ain't from Africa. You right here. And that's what we talking about. These motherfuckers be out here chasing some shit that never existed. You out here playing the game all by yourself. You on the basketball court passing the ball to no fucking body. You on the football field throwing the ball and ain't nobody catching it. And then when you finally start to realize that you've been playing the game all by yourself, you've been a part of some type of group that does not exist, the motherfucker don't exist here and it don't exist there. It don't exist right here where you live. It don't exist in the place that you always talk about going home to. So when you really finally find that out, after you went on an anti-FBA reparations tour, Dr. Kubar, after your ass done flew all the way around the world chasing some shit that don't exist, called us a hate group and every last thing under the sun, then you come to find out that foundational black Americans are right again, family. We are a hundred out of a hundred. Didn't I say, when we say some shit gonna go down, it go down. When we say some shit about to pop off, it pop off. Well, family, it done popped off with the Pan-Africans and the Tethers now, and foundational black Americans have been proven correct for the 3 men, 97th and 85th time. Goddamn right, yes, 3 men, 97th and 85th time. And by the end of this episode, it'll be on the 4 men, 87th and 25th time. That's how motherfucking fast we push it. Because when we say it, it happens because we're not speaking out of emotion. You see the beauty of not speaking out of emotion? You see the beauty of not chasing Disneyland and La La Land? You got the luxury of just saying what the fuck is real. One thing about Certified Black Society Foundational Black Americans and our family tree, we say what it is. We don't play no games. What we always say, family, this is our turn. It is what it is. We don't sit there and say, well, it is what it ain't, or it is what I want it to be, or it is what we hope it could be. Nah, fuck that. It is what it is. If your ass off cold, your ass off cold. If your ass tethers on the people, your ass is a tether. If your ass is scam African, then your ass is scamming. And the biggest scam African guy who's been out here hating on FBA and collecting our money for his invisible school, he is finally admitting Everything that foundational black Americans have said about the tethers, but it ain't coming from us, it's coming from him. So all we gonna do is sit back, grab our popcorn, slam our pieces on the table, and say checkmate, cause shit getting real out here, y'all. Uh. And unfortunately, so many of our African immigrant parents, unfortunately, so many of our African immigrant parents come to America thinking they better than us. Come to America thinking they better than us. That when someone like Dr. Umar Johnson wants to come to the African community in America and say, let me train your parents on how to advocate for their kids, they run away from me and run to the damn white man. And run to the damn white man because he gave you refugee status. Because he gave you refugee status from a damn war that he started. When I try to help you, you run away from me and run to the white man because he gave you refugee status. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's in the first 42 seconds. Oh yeah, FBA right, FBA right, was right again, was right about that, was right about that, and now you got to admit this shit all along. Let's keep going. And so now you think you've been blessed by God because the white man gave you refugee status in the United States. He mad, y'all. Refugee status that wouldn't even be necessary if the white man didn't start the war that you had to run away from in the first place. We said that. And then they tell you to stay away from black folks in America. So y'all get to America, start acting like y'all don't know who we are. But your damn kids is being special educated, miseducated, and black immigrant youth, black immigrant youth, black immigrant youth are one of the fastest growing prison populations in America. Black immigrant youth, black African Black African immigrant youth are one of the fastest growing prison populations in America. Stop, pause, hold up. Damn, now that's just a minute and 15 seconds in. I done gave you the 43 seconds in and I gave you the minute and 15 seconds in and he done said everything the foundational black Americans been saying for the last 10 years. Come on, let's get real. You know it's fucked up when the prince of Pan-Africanism is flipping on the tellers. God damn, shit done got real in these streets. But didn't we say all that before, family? So who can call us divisive anymore? I guess we're not divisive because if we're divisive, then Dr. Umar is divisive. If we're divisive, then Pan-Africanism is divisive because that's what they saying. That's the prince. 
That's the Prince of Pan-African, and he's saying every single thing the certified black society has said. So that means that they're divisive too. I guess we all just gonna have to be divisive. It can't be FBA no more. Y'all can't just say FBA is a hate group. I guess Pan-Africanism is a hate group too. I guess everybody divisive. Or is it that we've been saying the truth the whole motherfucking time, and now they got to acknowledge it because what's done in the dark comes to light and the truth shall set you free. Because you damn Africans come to America, some of you, and ain't got no damn Pan-African consciousness. Damn, hey, he called them damn Africans. <laughs> he mad. He big mad. He Pan-African mad. When everything you get is a result of the struggle that we have been through. Wow, we say that too. Is the result of the struggle that we have been through, and you want to turn your nose up at us because the white man gave you a refugee status card. Get your ass out my face. <laughs> I don't deal with sellout African Americans, and I damn sure ain't gonna deal with no sellout Africans from the continent. <laughs> that motherfucker went from the Prince of Pan African to the Prince of Pissed Off all in one motherfucking day. And that's all the fuck we've been saying the whole motherfucking time. Certified black society has been saying the truth about tethers. It ain't our fault if everybody wants to catch on now. Something done pissed him off, okay? He probably done went over to goddamn Uganda and they revoked his motherfucking passport. Or his ass probably done flew over to Zimbabwe and he couldn't get some fucking Joe loft that he wanted. I don't know what it is. We don't know what it is, but we know it happened. Because you don't get to the point where all of a sudden you start saying these things that FBA has been saying for a long time, but yet you had a problem when FBA was saying it. Other than some shit done pissed them off. And that's what we speak about when motherfuckers is living in Disneyland and La La Land. They only care when shit gets personal for them. See, we different. We call a spade a spade. If you do some shit to us, we're going to call it out. But if we see you doing some shit to somebody else, we're going to call it out. What did I say? Foundational Black America vernacular it is what it is okay excuse me it is what the fuck it is we do not care how someone feels about our statements because if it's the truth then it's gonna get spoken these people have been living in this fake ass fallacy fantasy world for a long time and it took something to happen to him for now all of a sudden he says what the fuck we say so my question again is are foundational black americans divisive because dr umar just said every single fucking thing we said that motherfucker said, damn Africa. He said, he's a, 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 a damn African. <laughs> that motherfucker mad as shit. He big man. I told you, he the prince of pissed off. He went from goddamn Dr. Umar Johnson to Dr. Kubar Vasquez from the prince of pan-Africanism to the prince of pissed off. That motherfucker done had 50 different names. Why? Why? Why now, Kubar? Why today, Kubar? Why you pissed off right here, Kubar? What happened to you, Kubar? Did you go over to the Congo coup bar? They couldn't give you a discount on the dashiki coup bar? They revoked your access to them free plates of Jolov coup bar? Or did you just go back to Cuba? Because remember, that's his homeland. That's Dr. Kubar Vasquez. Maybe he just traded in Africa for Cuba. Maybe he's flip-flopping. Maybe that's what it is all of a sudden. But what we do know for sure is that certified foundational black Americans said all this shit a long time ago. Exactly. Only difference is when we said it, Dr. Kubar literally went on a tour and was saying how we was divisive and we was wrong. Y'all know. He was like, y'all, FBAs, y'all only create divisions amongst all African people. Now you saying the same exact motherfucking thing we said. As a matter of fact, we don't only have receipts right here on the Black Alpha Network. We got spoilers. The foundational black Americans don't like Caribbean blacks. Honestly, you should probably ask their quote-unquote leader. I think their quote-unquote leader would have a better answer for you. But as the voice of Garveyism in the 21st century, and as the voice for revolutionary Pan-Africanism in the 21st century, I do not support that organization or its rhetoric, nor do I support the other organizations that are similar somewhat in scope, function, and philosophy. I believe in the total and unconditional unification and liberation of all African people in the world. Okay. Damn, he don't flip flop, didn't he? Because apparently he agrees with us more than his ass was saying. Because he just said every single thing that we say. If somebody says something and then you say the exact same thing that they said, that means you agree with them. 
So you said every single thing that we said, that means you agree with us, and that means that your ass is divisive. So everything you said about foundational black Americans rhetoric, that rhetoric belongs to you. Every single thing you said about foundational black Americans in Africa and the Caribbean, that belongs to you. Every single thing you said about foundational black Americans being divisive, that belongs to you because you said the same exact thing the foundational black Americans said in Black Alpha Network calling your ass out, Kubar. <laughs> Proceed. So let's talk about every single thing that we said and how this guy said the same exact thing starting with this. Unfortunately, so many of our African immigrant parents come to America thinking they better than us. Come to America thinking they better than us. Didn't we say that, family? Yes, we did. Receipt. And then they tell you to stay away from black folks in America so y'all get to America, start acting like y'all don't know who we are. And then we say that as well, family. Yes, we did. Receipt. But your damn kids is being special educated, miseducated, and black immigrant youth, black immigrant youth, black immigrant youth are one of the fastest growing prison populations in America. Black immigrant youth, black African, black African immigrant youth are one of the fastest growing prison populations in America. Because you damn Africans come to America, some of you, and ain't got no damn Pan-African consciousness. Whoa, hold on. Special receipt. Oh, no, 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 no. That ain't just one receipt. No, fuck that. That's a special receipt. Let alone all the other fucking things that we said that he just admitted to. One by one by one. We put receipts on the table. Receipts on the table. Like I said, don't get mad at us for calling out the shit. Get mad at yourself for saying the shit because we only use your own words against you. He said that they are the number one new people in the prison system. Yes. Now it's funny because when we say they come over here and they bring all that crime, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. We say all them tethers, they be up in New York City and throughout the country committing all types of crime. And then they say, oh, we just black. They only just black when they commit a crime. Something that we all gotta wear, that jacket. But whenever they win any type of fucking award, I don't give a fuck if it's an NAACP award, a fucking SB award, a fucking Nickelodeon award. Then it's, ladies and gentlemen, coming from his homeland of Nigeria or Zimbabwe born actress. Then all of a sudden they put their country and continent specifically on their achievements. But when they commit all these crimes, then all of a sudden it's black so they can throw that on the foundational black Americans and we got to wear that shit. Now, when we say that, motherfuckers get angry. When we say that, motherfuckers say we divisive. As a matter of fact, Dr. Kubar, his goddamn self, has said that we're divisive only for having real constructive criticism about some of that backdoor backstabbing culture, some of that tribalism that they bring over here. It ain't on us. We simply state they have a lot of tribalism that they bring over here. He said they got tribalism that they bring over here. Because y'all don't have one bit of black Pan-African consciousness. AKA tribalism. He said the same shit we said. When we say that they commit a lot of crimes and he says that they're the number one new inmates in prison, that right there is the same thing we said again. Motherfuckers only prove us right. They've never been able to prove us wrong. That's the difference between FBA. You can't poke no holes in our statements. You can't point no holes in our logic. There ain't any. You be sitting here all day trying to poke holes in what we say because we don't speak out of fantasy. When a motherfucker speaks out of fantasy, when a motherfucker speaks out of falsehoods and fallacies, you can poke a hundred holes in it because the shit ain't solid. Everything they say is hollow. It ain't got no motherfucking backbone. We speak the truth based upon what we see. And when you do that, you got the luxury of always being correct. And like I said, if you watch around, all you see is foundational black Americans are always 100% correct. No lies detected. And Dr. Kubar Vasquez is continuously proving us correct again. So let me get this right. One, they side with the W man when they get over here. We've been saying that. Two, they act like they don't know who we are when they come over here. We've been saying that. And three, they commit all types of crimes when they get over here. And we've been saying that as well. But family, them receipts ain't even enough. Hell no, let's get to the biggest one. Oh yeah, this is something that foundational black Americans have been on for a long time. And when we start speaking of delineating, when we start speaking of separating, motherfuckers get mad at us. Now let me say this real quick before we go there. Let me step to the side. Anybody that was familiar with the OMB, 
the designation and classifications that was happening just recently with the Office of Management and Budget, and there was a big push, and me and several of my brothers helped push that so we can get foundational black Americans classified because that is the unremixable term and the one that galvanizes the people the most. One thing happened when you were listening to them calls, and I'm not just talking about when we were calling in. You started to hear people from other lineages, and they kept talking about delineating. They kept saying, hey, I'm not of the same lineage as this. We may be the same race, but we're not the same lineage. So when you look and you examine all of these other people on the planet, all of these other people coming into America by the flocks, one thing they do is they separate their lineage from the greater race because lineage is a specific heritage. Yes, a specific ethnic group. But when we've been doing that and we've been on that heavy, motherfuckers get mad, everybody gets mad. Why do you want to separate? Why do you want to delineate? We're all the same, we're all black. Remember that shit? We all black, we all black, brother. We all black, Dr. Umar been saying that. That's exactly what Pan-Africanism is. It's we're all black, there shouldn't be no delineating. There should be no separating. We all just one big black person, the same way the dominant society sees us. Ain't it funny that we was calling in the OMB because they want to see us as an OBN? Yeah, y'all know what OBN means. So the one big N-I-G-G-A policy that the dominant society in the whole goddamn world believes that we all just one big black person, okay? We've been getting away from that constantly and everybody's been catching the attitude why we've been doing it. But yet everybody else is trying to separate themselves. But when we say that certified foundational black Americans built and created this country and all of these other buffer class and crowbar groups who come over here, particularly those from the diaspora, particularly those from Africa, they would not be here if it was not for the backbone of our ancestors. Motherfuckers get upset and angry. Like that ain't the goddamn truth. That's the 100% unequivocal truth. But when we said that before, Dr. Kubar got mad. He didn't believe in delineation. He didn't believe in separation. He believed in the OBN belief the same way the dominant society believed in the OBN belief. You got to remember, if the dominant society sees us as one big N-I-G-G-A and Pan-Africans see us as one big N-I-G-G-A, don't you see why Pan-Africanism was so problematic? Or excuse me, why Pan-African or Scam Africanism was so much bullshit? They literally view black folks the same way that the dominant society does. We all just won. And I'm here to tell the whole goddamn world we ain't one. And certified black society and all of y'all are certified, honey. How long we been saying that, family? How long we been saying that, that we different? How long have we been saying our differences in terms of ethnicity, heritage, and culture has to be respected? And we ain't just one big black person. No, but Dr. Kubar was getting real mad about that shit. And how long we've been saying that if it wasn't for our ancestors here in this country, our ancestors here in these 50 states, they would not even be allowed to come here because they come here benefiting off of the civil rights policies that our ancestors fought for. Not the ancestors in Cuba, not the ancestors in Zimbabwe, not the ancestors in Jamaica or Haiti, the ancestors right here in the United States of America that are me and you, our ancestors. Yeah. And Dr. Kubar was leading that front when he was on his anti-FBA world tour. I mean, this guy was doing interviews and he wasn't even talking about supremacy. He was talking about no reparations for us. We don't know how to handle the money. We too dumb. We too ignorant. We gonna buy Jordans. We gonna buy Cadillacs. We gonna give our money back. Yep, Dr. Kubar was the main one leading that push. He was on the front lines of why we do not need cash payments. And he was also on the front lines of how we do not need to delineate. But listen to him here. Receipt again. Thinking you better than me when everything you get is the result of the struggle that we have been through. Oh, everything watch it. Get is the result of the struggle that we have we. been through. And you want to turn your nose up at us because the white man that gave you a refugee status card. Get your ass out my face. Whoa. Whoa. Slow down. Hold up. Hold up. One motherfucking minute. That's exactly what the fuck we've been saying. That people come over here and benefit off the slave labor of our ancestors in these 50 states. They've been coming over here benefiting off of all of the civil rights policies that our ancestors created in these 50 states. All of the marches, all the sit-ins, all the rallies, all the riots, all the protests, even things that we do right here today, everybody's coming to this country and benefiting from. And he knows that, we've known that, but we've been the only ones saying it. And we've been saying that shit with our chest. And when Foundational Black 
black Americans say things with their chest, motherfuckers get upset and angry. And the problem that they have right now is that this generation don't give two fucks. Don't give one fuck. Don't give half a fuck. Don't give zero fucks. We gonna say what we gotta say. We gonna speak what's real because we've always spoke what's real. We are the only genuine, specific lineage, heritage, and culture on this earth. Everybody else, they practice being fake as fuck. Yes, they do. How do you know people practice being fake as fuck? Because they come over here and they try to take from us. What's more fake than trying to steal from somebody? How the hell you can't create something on your own so you gotta come and take it from somebody? We've been sitting here dealing with anti-blackness where they're trying to deprive us economically, socially, we get the worst clothes, the worst schools, the worst education, and we still winning, and these motherfuckers get handouts and still can't make something happen. The fakest thing on this earth is a motherfucker who can't make something for themselves, so they gotta go steal from somebody. And mind you, all of those folks who are coming in from the diaspora, they were coming over here stealing from another victim of anti-blackness. See, it's one thing to steal. It's one thing to take. It's one thing to not be able to create for yourself. But to come and take from somebody who is another victim of supremacy? Mind you, we are the only victims of supremacy that have ever stood up and fought back. We represent that small line, only us. I ain't talking about your one hit wonder. I ain't talking about you did some shit back in 1800s, the 1300s, back in the 19-2s. Fuck that. Fuck the 19-2s. We've been doing shit since day one forward, and we gonna continue. We come from a real long lineage of riders, our sisters, riders, our brothers, riders. Right here on the Black Alpha Network, we call them certifies, and we stay fighting, they don't. But yet, they'd rather be victims of supremacy in their homeland, where they outnumber the supremacists, and then fly over here and steal and hate and be jealous of other victims of supremacy. You know why? Because they have no concept of race. They have no concept of my brother and sister. They only utter the terms brother and sister when it comes to stealing from us. I don't even think they even knew what the fuck that was. How do you know this? Because all of my brothers and sisters that are older than us are elders who have told me about back in the day. They said they never spoke about that brother shit. They used to call us every bad name in the motherfucking book. Tell us how we ain't even black, we ain't humans. The motherfuckers like, you're not black, you're not even human. They got all types of slurs. It ain't just a cotta. They got all types of slurs for us over there. But them motherfuckers come over here and try to take from us. And now they say brother all of a sudden. They finally discovered the term brother when we discovered our reparations claim. It goes hand in hand. Ain't it funny? We find out about reparations. They find out about the word brother. We find out about reparations. They find out about the word sister. If we quit talking reparations and cash payments tomorrow, guarantee the word brother and sister would quit coming out their mouth. So these are the people that Dr. Kubar was caping for a long time. And don't get it twisted, because the one thing that we always called out is that Pan-Africans never talked about problems in Pan-Africa. Never. They always had criticism for us. Now all of a sudden he want to talk about them. Shit. Thinking you better than me when everything you get is a result of the struggle that we have been through. Is a result of the struggle that we have been through. Is a result of the struggle that we have been through. And you want to turn your nose up at us because the white man that gave you a refugee status card. As far as I'm concerned, Dr. Kubar, you can just stay Mr. Pan-African. Be the prince of Pan-Africanism all you want. Don't come on over here to the FBA side. If you went down, then you ain't down now, point blank, period. You can stand fucking Cuba or stand Zimbabwe or whatever. Just stay there. Go have some Joe Law with a smile. Go have some foo-foo with a smile. Or better yet, have some Joe Law and shut the fuck up. All right? We, we ain't playing that game. Because that's the thing. When we speak, things happen. When we make up our mind, we go. See, they got to get used to this era, family. This is the era where we call things out. This is the era where we make up our decisions and we make it happen. This is the real time era. We're not waiting again. All that 60 years, 70 years, you already know. We say that shit all the time. That I'm going to struggle, y'all. And I know if I have it bads, my kids will have it goods. We don't live like that nowadays. You have to be correct now. You have to be correct in real time. This is a high performance situation. Anytime you're dealing with anti-blackness or a system of supremacy, the victims of supremacy have to be very precise. Ain't no waiting. You can't put shit on layaway. We can't put shit on the back burner. They used to put peace and justice on the back burner. That's why we, all in this generation, had to get out the mops, the dustpans, and the broom and clean up all the fucking mess that they left us because they was too fucking lazy to do something about it. And all that, man, I'm going to be the Pan-Africans and I'm going to fight for all the black people on the planet. And now you're talking about some, y'all come here and y'all hate on us. Man, we've been saying that shit. You should have got on that FBA jumbo jet a long fucking time ago. But I don't give a shit because anybody who did not want to be down with certified black society, certified foundational black Americans, and your ass gets left behind, I'm exactly cool with it. You are where you deserve to be.
That's what it is. My brothers and sisters stay on it. We had a space not too long ago and somebody called in and he was talking about, man, can't we just wait and, and figure things out and have a backdoor, back channel meeting with all these other people who are off code? He wanted to have an on code, off code meeting. Like an off code motherfucker gonna come and sit down at the table, tell us why he's off code and we gonna sit there as on code people and have some type of dialogue. We gotta get over that shit. And the cool thing about it is, all y'all right now, all my certified family, I see y'all, I see y'all. I know you on the same exact time as I'm on and that's that you either with us or you against us. You either riding or you staying at home. Either you bought this money or get the fuck out our way. There's too much interference, man. All that shit that people out here saying, no, we just deserve free education and we deserve free Uber rides and some catfish nuggets. All that is, is people trying to stall you out. That's people trying to stop you. That's people trying to give you the long gated game. We ain't got time for that shit. Hell to the no. If your ass is behind, you gonna stay behind. I know young brothers and sisters right now who are further advanced than old motherfuckers because it's all about mentality. And Dr. Kubar, he's trying to jump ship or whatever the hell he's doing. He can stay wherever the fuck he's at. That's point blank bottom line. Because remind you, I remember the same Dr. Kubar Johnson who was saying this. That the reparations movement for the African people, I'm speaking of the entire race, should be a unified movement. I do not endorse the tribalistic approach to reparations that we currently see. Wow. That was Dr. Kubar Vasquez just one year ago. Yep. He also said this. A cash payout for reparations is a trap. Mm. And the reason a cash payout for reparations is a trap is because so much of what needs to be fixed in American society for African people will take more than cash to do it. In other words, I give DA DJ injury $233,000. Or if I take the Bob Johnson plan, he said each American African is due $350,000, right? I give you $350,000. Does that stop mass incarceration? Interference. Does that stop miseducation? Interference. Does that stop gentrification? Interference. Does that stop police genocide? Interference. Does that guarantee us access to wealth? I interference, mean, in interference, what interference. What you get with $233,000? All I heard was interference, interference, interference. I don't want FBA to get the money unless everybody in the diaspora gets the money. Because understand, family, this is what it's really about. Foundational black Americans delineating is a threat to anybody who still believes in scam Africanism. It slows up their hustle. It slows up their scams, their schemes, and their plots, and they can't get off that Disneyland shit. It really upsets their feelings. You got to look at it like this. The same way when brothers and sisters talk about getting peace and justice and all the old folks feel, that's going to disrupt their little fish fry. That's going to disrupt their collard greens. That's going to disrupt them voting for the Democratic Party. And they say, y'all's going to rock the boat. Dr. Kubar is giving us the Pan-Africanism version of y'all going to rock the boat. Reparations is not only going to rock the Pan-Africanism boat, it's going to flip that motherfucker over. The same way it's going to flip it over for the Ukraines, it's going to flip it over for the people of color, it's going to flip it over for the minorities, the Democrats, or whoever the fuck else. And that's why we're going to push it. Reparations not only is a debt that's owed to us, and it will serve us, and by the way, everything he just named, will it stop gentrification? Will it stop bad education? Will it stop police brutality? Um, yeah, actually. Uh, reparations would put it into all that shit because now we're going to have the finances in the capitalistic system to fight back against all of that. They don't try to make us a permanent underclass because money would not help us. The reason why they want to keep you from the money because they understand that the money would serve you. And this motherfucker want us not to have the money. In a capitalistic society, Dr. Kubar Johnson wants us not to have money. He tells us that in the most savage capitalistic society on the face of the earth, money would not help you when money is the root of everything in this country. Y'all seeing all the bailouts? Y'all seeing all the bank crisis? Does that got something to do with money? The house that you live in and paying rent, does that have something to do with money? Do you have your lights on? Does that have something to do with money? Have you ate today? <laughs> have you had any food today? Does that help you with money? Considering foundational black Americans represent the biggest homeless rate in this country, would reparations help those people? No, 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 because he was more concerned with serving his scam Africanism. That's the shit we talking about. And now he's trying to flip it. But let me say this. As we lay down one receipt, we come across others. That's why I'll tell people, foundational black Americans, we are the ultimate multitaskers. We can G check your ass on the way to the bank and still cash the check. How many times do we regulate a motherfucker on the way to regulating another motherfucker? We might be regulating person A and regulate person B in the part time. That's how G and thorough we are. 
we laid down a receipt on all that bullshit that Dr. Kubar was saying, things that we've been saying a long time ago. Now he just wants to talk about it, but that's cool, whatever, fuck him. But did you notice in the midst of all that, we see the real reason why Dr. Kubar is upset? Didn't I say, family, hey, didn't I say, God damn, shut the hell up. My bad, I hit the damn clip. Anyway, didn't I say that there's a bigger reason why he's mad? Didn't I say it's got to be deeper? Because everything that we're saying, we all know it's the fucking truth. See, we ain't asking somebody to accept the truth. Either you accept the shit or not, we gonna keep it moving. That's the beauty of being correct. When you correct, you go places. When your ass is wrong, you stay in the same place forever. And Dr. Kubar gonna be an old ass man with gray hair, still talking that bullshit and the Pan-Africanism that never came and never existed. Dr. Kubar is gonna be stuck in the same place as the black and brown no coalition gonna be. And they ain't gonna go nowhere in foundational black Americans. We done got reparations and travel the whole fucking world. That's how fast we move, that's how slow they move. That's the difference between being real and being fake. But didn't I say that his ass was denied access to a free plate of Fufu and Jolof? Didn't I say he couldn't get them discounts on them dashikis no more? Didn't I say somebody done upset his ass personally? See, that was personal. That was personal. You don't just come around and start saying everything the FBA has been saying all of a sudden. He didn't just wake up yesterday and realize that we were right. Because trust and believe, oh, it burns all them scam Africans. And that's not the first time. There's another dude. I don't even know his name. But he was going back and forth with scam Africans. And not only do they go back and forth with them, they actually start calling them tethered. They'll be literally defining what a tether is. And that's the one thing that sets them off. The term tether was the best created term that has happened in the 21st century. Tether literally put millions of off-coded motherfuckers in a box. A box that they didn't have to be in before. They used to just come over here freely, steal shit, latch on to you, blend into your culture, and walk right the fuck away. What I always say, family, they would walk in the FBA house, track dirt and mud all on your fucking carpet, kick the goddamn dog, kick the cat, walk past the living room, go into your refrigerator, not even wash their hands. Put their tether fingers all in your fucking cornbread and just take your shit. And then walk right out the house, not say hi to nobody, and just leave and take that shit back home to their place. Until we started saying tether. When we started saying tether, woo, that shit set them off. They was getting mad. They was like, no, what is tether? Tether is mad. They went and tried to make a fucking hate group petition. <laughs> they ain't out here trying to get any petition to stop anti-blackness. They went out here trying to get any petition to fight supremacy or any petition to get better education. No, they was out here trying to get a petition on us. So they put their hate on us above the system of supremacy. Once again, they have no concept of race. They only have concepts of tribalism. Well, anyway, when we started saying tether, motherfuckers got mad. Dr. Kubar was one of the main people getting mad when we would say tether. He's openly saying that foundational black Americans are divisive. I've seen it. The clips was on. The cameras was rolling. Go Google it. He got very pissed off. He was one of the main ones getting mad. Mr. Lumbumba, Mr. Mutombo, and Dr. Kubar pissed off. All three of them. Them motherfuckers was mad. Yes, they was. But then he sits down on an interview and he starts calling them tether by definition. Saying, y'all come over here, you take from us. That's a tether. Saying, y'all come over here and you elevate above us. That's a tether. Admitting exactly to what we said. So we know it had to be personal. The facts didn't just get here last night. The facts been here. And the very fact that he's saying exactly what we said, and we know it burns him because he does not want to agree with FBA because he has FBA jealousy. He has FBA spite. And he sees foundational black Americans moving right along while he's trying to take foundational black American donations. Excuse me, not trying. Has been taking foundational black American donations for a long time. The same FBA that he says can't control money. We're too financially illiterate. Basically, we're too fucking ignorant and we can't spend money. But he's always got his hand out and say, my cash app is Dr. Kubar. Uh, the Prince of Pissed Off, the Prince of Pissed Off Jolof slash seven. Go ahead and send me some money for my invisible school. So he been seeing FBA moving while he ain't been going nowhere. Didn't I just say that people who are wrong stay in the same place and people who are right, they take off and they go places right then and there. He's still doing the same exact thing. Look what we doing because we correct. We making boss moves and we traveling around and look what he's doing because he's incorrect. He's stuck in the same place trying to get a school off the ground and he's been trying to get off the ground for 20 years. And the same FBA that he talks bad about, the same FBA he tries to stop our cash reparations is the same FBA he's trying to take cash donations from. Okay, so he got flag after flag after flag after motherfucking flag. But as I proceed, it's got to be personal, the very fact that he's agreeing with us, and it's got to be personal, the very fact that he's saying things that have always been here, okay? He knows the same way we know what the fuck them tethers be doing. They just live in a state of Pan-African denial. Understand, when you see a Pan-African, they just living in denial, family. They living in denial. Never think that these people don't get it. See, when you just assume someone doesn't understand, they don't really know what's happening, a big grown-ass man, 
a guy who travels the whole planet, he sees this shit up close and personal. And you assume, oh, he just don't get it. You know that shit where, let's wait till they wake up now. All that is, is a fucking excuse. All right, a child, you can wait to wake up. These big grown ass people, they know exactly what it is and they're making a decision to either go along with the truth or to lie to themselves. And anybody who represents Pan-Africanism, something that does not exist, it's obvious that they're lying to themselves because they believe in some shit that does not exist. And you can mark them up with all the democratic shields and all the people of colors and all the black and browns. They all believe in some shit that does not exist. So you see that Kubar had his feelings hurt. Kubar went over there and he got rejected by Africans while he was trying to serve Pan-Africanism. And that's a hard pill to swallow for somebody living in Disneyland. He don't wanna even accept the truth, so you know he can't accept being turned away. And if you listen, while he was going on that whole Pan-African tether rant that he was talking, he threw in there several times, then you want to get mad at me for trying to help you? And then he openly says, fam, exclusive. We're going to break it down the only way we know how. Black Alpha Network certified B-L-A-C-K. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel, too. Did y'all notice? As I say, we G-check motherfuckers on the way to the bank. We expose motherfuckers while we exposing motherfuckers. And we cash receipts while we giving out spoilers. We do it all at the same damn time. Did you notice why we're exposing his rant and all the things that he was saying? Things that we've been saying. He also threw in there several times how he was rejected when he went over to Africa. He went over there to spread his scam Africanism and he encountered the same thing that brothers and sisters always encounter when they go over there. Did y'all see the story about the brother and sister over in Haiti? They got kidnapped. Did y'all see that story? Yes, yes, a brother and sister went over to Haiti and they were kidnapped. They went home to visit and they got caught up. They got kidnapped and the kidnappers have demanded $6,000. Yes, they tried to up the price to $200,000 per person. Yes, this is what's happening to brothers and sisters who are traveling to go home, brother, and they're being met with this. There was another elderly couple, I wanna say in Ghana, that were deleted because they were trying to go home. So scam Africanism is not just a joke that we make fun of, it's very motherfucking dangerous. And I suggest all my brothers and sisters right here on the FBA family tree, we all stay together and we stick together. If you're going to face something real, face it right here when you with the people who genuinely call you brother and sister, not with the folks who only call you brothers and sisters when they want some of your cash payments, okay? FBA, we're the only ones who have ever had each other's back. I always say this. You know who calls an FBA sister sister? Another FBA sister or an FBA brother. You know who calls an FBA brother brother? Another FBA sister or an FBA brother. We're the only ones who have ever loved each other. We're the only ones who have ever helped everybody down while we've been out here on this island dealing with supremacy by our goddamn self it didn't take us to fly all the way to another place and be rejected before we start speaking the truth god damn it turn the fuck off hold on god damn listen the motherfucking clip wants to play so we're gonna play the clip listen to what he says about how he was rejected and then you're gonna see this is what it's all about mr scam african got his ass scammed unfortunately so many of our african immigrant parents come to america listen close y'all thinking they better than us come to America thinking they better than us, that when someone like Dr. Umar Johnson wants to come to the African community in America and say, let me train your parents on how to advocate for their kids, they run away from me and run to the damn white man. Right there. Run it back. Hold on one more time. Uh-uh, fuck that. Listen. That when someone like Dr. Umar Johnson, that when someone like Dr. Umar Johnson, that when someone like Dr. Umar Johnson wants to come to the African community in America, say, let me train your parents. They run away from me. They run away from me. They run away from me. They run away from me and run to the damn white man. That part. You see, didn't we say that it was some person? Didn't we say? When they've been doing that to the whole lineage, to the whole heritage, to the whole culture. When they've been disrespecting foundational black Americans, past, present, and future. When they was coming over here and disrespecting our ancestors. When they was coming over here and disrespecting us. He didn't have nothing to say. But the very moment that they reject his ass and they done scam African, the scam African. Now, all of a sudden, it's a problem. Goddamn receipts, more spoilers, putting it on the table. The damn table stack so high with receipts, family. We ain't got no more room left. Foundational black Americans ain't got no more room left for receipts. I mean, we just giving these motherfuckers out. We handing out receipts as fast as we can print them. We ain't even got enough time for this shit. This is how correct we are. No lies detected. Everything we speak is true. 
So when these folks have been over here tethering on us like ain't no tomorrow, we've been out here pissing them off. You got all these TWAs, tethers with attitudes. When we say shit, but motherfuckers used to always try to run interference and try to stop us from speaking the truth. And when we get to speaking the truth, motherfuckers understand it's real. Goddamn right it's real. And Dr. Kubar Vasquez is just another point proven, just another receipt on the table, and just another reason why certified foundational black Americans are on game and on point better than ever. Right there. Now I want you to notice how many times he says refugee status. He says that shit like 30 fucking times. Back to back to back to back. You could tell that's what's pissing them off. But here's the thing. Motherfucker, we could have told you that a long time ago. We've been saying it for years that the refugee status by the dominant society means everything to them. The refugee status is why they fled from their homeland. They left their mama. They left their kids. They left their wives. They left their husbands. They left their culture and everything back home just to flee for that refugee status. It ain't about just leaving where you're at. It's about what massa you run into. And they master clearly is the dominant society and they jingle that refugee status over them and then they get to running towards that shit. And they'll flee and leave everything behind in the process. And we've been saying that shit forever. Certified Black Society has put that receipt on the table a long motherfucking time ago. And what Mr. Scam African Dr. Kubar is just finding out is that all that Scam African shit he's kicking, that don't mean a motherfucking thing when it comes to refugee status. Hell no. Nah. Refugee status to a tether is the biggest badge of honor you could ever find. Let's say something that don't nobody want to talk about. OK, we always say this right here on the Black Alpha Network is that immigration is ninety nine point nine percent about proximity to massa. Yep. That's what it's always been about. Do not separate these fleers from massa. They want to be next to master, close to master, any which way they can. I don't give a fuck how they come to this country. I don't give a damn what polluted ass river they swim through, what hot ass desert they walk through, what ocean they fly over, or what barbed wire fence they try to climb. They asses done came over here to be next to Karen and Ken. That's exactly what the fuck it is. Don't nobody want to say it, we gonna say it. Immigration is all about proximity to the dominant society. And they wear that shit with a badge of honor. And they don't tell you how half these people who flee, all that shit about going back home and all that, they don't want to go back home. That's why they left and fled the first place. It's a race to see who can flee first. That shit is a competition. <laughs> the first fleer is the winner. Who can flee the furthest is the winner. That's what I'm telling you right now. That's the part nobody want to talk about. And these little countries that everybody's trying to run from, hide from, jock by and all that shit, they view fleeing in fleers like it's a badge of honor. Yes, the fuck they do. And the motherfuckers who run, they ain't trying to go back home and rebuild and all that shit. Hell no. Hell to the no. They like, man, fuck all them. I'm out. Peace and motherfucking gone. And if they ever do see people from their homeland, they be uppity as fuck. They be bragging and shit. Seeing their own family members back in their homeland and be talking, what are you still doing here? You're still here in the village? You eat jollof? I don't eat jollof now. I'm with Karen and Ken. Karen makes the best unseasoned mashed potatoes, and I even get Brussels sprouts. And you still live here. You are a disgrace, Mutombo. <laughs> hey, and Mutombo be sitting there thinking, well, maybe one day I can flee and I can have unseasoned Brussels sprouts and mashed potatoes too now. See, we got to understand, to them, a fleer is like the first person that went to college. They look up to a fleer. They adore a fleer. They admire a fleer. A fleer is like a national hero. They throw parades for him. Fleeing and making it to America is seen as like a national accomplishment. You know what I mean? You might get the keys to the village. <laughs> not the city, you might get the keys to the village. Fleeing is not just a destination, it's a mentality. There's a whole mentality that comes along with it and we always break it down. All facts. Nobody wants to say it, but we will. Uncut, no filters. Them motherfuckers ain't got no shame in fleeing. See, we look at that shit different. I always tell you, a foundational and a fleer got two different mentalities. We build, they steal. We look at that shit as shameful when you cannot build something for yourself. We look at that shit as shameful when you cannot get something on your own, when you gotta take from somebody else. To foundational black Americans, the only lineage, heritage, and culture that has ever built something as big and strong as America that truly, genuinely got it out the mud. To us, man, we look at motherfuckers who run, flee, and hide like they losers. That's how we look at them. There ain't no other way. There is no honor in leaving your family behind. Hell no, nah. we ain't never fled. Now look at everything that we've ever had to deal with in this country and ain't never left. As a matter of fact, we got stronger staying here. So hell yeah, we look at that shit different. They don't. They all look up to the fleers because they were in that fleer competition. I told you, whoever flees further is the winner. It's a big fleer race. 
and the tethers are involved, all the motherfuckers. And it's ready, set, go. How the fuck far can you run? What country can you get to? How quick can you get to the country? Find the Karen and Ken. Get you some unseasoned mashed potatoes and some Brussels sprouts. That's winning to them. For us, winning is building America. For us, building is getting that money. For us, building is being proud of who the fuck we are. They don't think that way. Hell to the north. So we could have told Dr. Kubar a long time ago that refugee status is the biggest badge of honor for all of them and they will throw everything away for it, including his ass. And now his ass is finding out what we've been saying a long motherfucking time ago. I told you, I told you they living in some type of Disneyland, y'all. The very fact that he thought he was gonna come over there and talk some black unity on earth shit to somebody who just wants a green card. They don't see black, they see green card. They don't even see green money. Hell no, they see green card. And if they ever do see green money, the only thing they see about green money is handing it over to the person who gave him the green card. They'll exchange green dollars for green card in a minute. That's the way they think. And Mr. Pan-African, he done found out the hard fucking way. And his ass mad as hell. Listen to how many times he uses the word refugee and you can tell where this shit coming from. Because he gave you refugee status. Because he gave one you refugee status to so, a damn war that he started. When I try to help you, you run away from me and run to the white man because he gave you refugee status. Three, and so now you think you've been blessed by God because the white man gave you refugee status four, in the United States. A refugee <laughs> status five, that wouldn't even be necessary <laughs> if the white man didn't start the war that you had to run away from in the first place. Stop. That motherfucker said refugee, refugee status, status, refugee, refugee status on Thursday and Friday at seven o'clock. You know what time it is. That motherfucker done been hurt personally. As I said before, it ain't had nothing to do with the whole community. It ain't had nothing to do with what we've been saying. It had nothing to do with all the disrespect for our lineage, heritage, and culture. It's when he was disrespected. So let's just keep it a buck. Dr. Umar thought he was going to go to Africa or talk to Africans in America and run Pan-Africanism on them and he got his Pan-African feelings hurt when he found out they didn't give a fuck about none of that. They just want the green card. <laughs> you gonna learn. Don't ever come in between a tether and his green card. Don't you ever do it. Uh-uh. You gonna fuck around and end up like Dr. Kubar Vasquez. You gonna have your feelings all hurt. That motherfucker done went and jumped on the internet. You know he was mad. <laughs> That motherfucker went and made a whole video on it, saying all types of shit that he would have never said before. That motherfucker got his feelings hurt. He hurt. Somebody go get him some RBG Kleenexes. <laughs> he hurt. He all in his Pan-African feelings. He was in between a rock and a hard place. A FLIR in the immigration office. <laughs> ah, shit. These motherfuckers gonna learn, man. You know the game fucked up, family. When you got Pan-Africanism on Pan-Africanism, tether on tether, tether on Pan-Africanism crime, when you got all that shit going on, you know this game is wild. But it's a game we all ready for and we here for it because we built for it. Hey, we the ones calling the shots anyway. It ain't like we don't know. We the ones who been saying this shit from afar. We been saying this shit from a distance. Every time we shoot, nothing but net. That's what it's like to be FBA. So we're gonna leave them over there and their little feelings and they can get that shit worked out amongst themselves. Green cars, immigration office, scam Africanism. I'm sure they'll come to a nice little conclusion. But whatever it is they come up with, it'll end up being exactly what we predicted. We build, they steal. Moving on. Speaking of stealing, one way a motherfucker tries to steal from you is to come up and just try to snatch it, but they know they can never do that with FBA because anybody who's ever tried that has failed. Oh, and trust me, you try to steal something from FBA in front of us, your ass not only gonna fail, you gonna fail miserably. Go ask the last guy. Anybody who's ever tried FBA, they've always found out the FBA ain't nothing to fuck with. All of them. So what's the next tactic they do? Some sneaky shit, some backdoor shit. I always say they can never see FBA through that front door. They gotta come in through the attic, the window, the back window, any way that they can infiltrate us or run interference on us to confuse us. That's what they do. See, we're not like those other people where you can go to their homeland and whoop them, where you can just come up in their house and just take their shit, where they got billions of people and you got five, and then the five people whoop the billions of people, that don't ever go on. Family, y'all know I always ask this question, but I gotta ask it to the family one more time, and that is, where would foundational black Americans be if we had the same population numbers that Africa has? Where will we be right now, family? 
Imagine if certified foundational black Americans had the population advantage that the Africans have over their colonizers. Where would we be? Question number two, and I ask them both all the time, where would certified foundational black Americans be if we had the access to all the natural resources that the Africans have that the colonizers take from them? What would we be doing? We'd be flipping it left and right, wouldn't we? We be flipping it. Hey, they don't want us to get reparations because they know we'll flip reparations. How do you know we'll flip reparations? Because we flipped America. We are the only lineage on the planet that flipped a country. We flipped a country through oppression, still doing it today. So you know we flipped that reparations check. And you damn sure know we flip every single mineral, every drop of oil, every fucking diamond, ruby, pearl that they got in Africa. They standing on the resources and they can't flip it. They falling over it. <laughs> There's a difference between falling over your resources opposed to flipping your reparations. Certified foundational black Americans, we on the good side like we always are. But speaking of flipping reparations. You're going to have people out here trying to run interference on our reparations because that's one of the ways they have to stop us. They can't stop us directly. They got to be indirectly. So you're seeing a lot of people come out now and they're trying to run interference. They're trying to say, oh, no, no, no. Reparations isn't really about money. Reparations is about a free Uber drive. We always say that. Reparations isn't about money. Reparations is about catfish nuggets. We always say that. It's about voting Democrat. It's about free education. It's about a loan or a donation to an HBCU. It's always something other than cash payments because they are afraid of us having cash payments. Y'all know, Black Alpha 6, I say it all the time. The world will hate you because you a foundational Black American, but they'll really hate you because you a foundational Black American with money. And not only will they hate you, they'll be afraid of you. Very scared. Because what history has proven is that we've taken lemons and we made lemonade. We take small money, turn it into big money. We take big money, turn it into huge money. And then we just keep on flipping it over and over again, something nobody else can do. So there will always be ops out here in full op duty trying to stop us from getting the money. But the people trying to stop us from getting the money will never come out and just say they're trying to stop you from getting the money. They'll point to other money, but it'll always be less than what you deserve. For instance, it won't be cash reparations with trillions of dollars attached to it. It'd be a couple million dollars for an HBCU half of us ain't ever gonna go to. It'd never be cash reparations in the form of trillions of dollars. Nope, it'd be free DoorDash that foundational black Americans can get every other Saturday night. <laughs> it'd never be cash payment reparations, nah. It'd be free fried chicken at the next Democratic campaign rally. <laughs> That's the type of shit they own. That's the type of time they own. So when you watch, nobody's been running more interference on foundational black American reparations than the NAACP. Yes. Now, let me say this about the NAACP. Other than they some bums. But the NAACP ain't shit. Ain't never been shit. Will never be shit. Their ain't shitness has always been known in the black community, ain't no surprise. I mean, look at their name. The Advancement for Colored People. That's it, that's all you need to know right there. People of color. Anytime you hear people of color, minority, disenfranchised, that basically means nothing for black folks. And within black folks, it's not lineage specific. So foundational black Americans get nothing, nothing, not at all. That's the way it is, that's the way it's been planned. Now the NAACP has been around for years and this shows you what we always say, supremacy has an 100 year plan. A long time ago, they said we gonna start saying people of color instead of black. We gonna start saying minority instead of black. Now they're saying refugee status instead of black, migrant instead of black, immigrant instead of black. All of these things are designed to keep the only lineage that has ever stood up the only lineage that has ever stood tall and the only lineage that has ever fought back which is certified foundational black americans at bay and we've been new that shit we done expose that shit we done call that shit the fuck out we know that the NAACP, NARC, and Cobra, all these NOOs and NAAs and CWIs, all these fucking organizations are meant to shield for the Democratic Party. That's it. And they create these terms and they create these fake advocacy committees so they can take tangibles that belong to us and transfer them over to other people. You got to look at the term NAACP or NCOBRA or whatever the fuck. You got to look at those as bridges. 
Those are fake advocacy groups that perpetrate like they're down for foundational black Americans. And really, they take all of our tangibles across that bridge and go give it to every other minority group that showed up last night. Straight up, somebody came here last night at 825 and they get access to more tangibles than black folks who've been here since day one. Black folks who built this country since day one. Black folks that there would be no country if it wasn't for us since day one. So that's what it is. And we got to watch these little organizations that pop up and say, we the black this and we the black that. They're not black anything. And if they are black, they're definitely not foundational black. They are immigrant black, migrant black, refugee status black, but they're not for certified foundational black Americans. No way, not at all. So the NAACP, they try to pull a little slick move, a little pump move. Yeah, and they try to do it real smooth, right? But they don't understand. They're not dealing with the old era. They think they're dealing with the African-American that used to sit back and let people harm them, would sit back and watch people play games, sit back and watch people hustle them, and they'd be proud of it. They're dealing with the foundational black American. Remember, there's a big difference between the African-American and the foundational black American. Big difference. Now, they try to run this little game and say, oh, we're for reparations. A lot of people out here, family, are saying they're for reparations. We have to watch that. Y'all know I've been talking about putting together a watchdog committee a watchdog petition and seeing every single person out here who runs interference on our reparations claim and putting their asses on that dotted line putting their asses on that screen putting their asses in that frame in that jumbotron so the world sees it and we're gonna get to that we're gonna work on that i'm gonna use all my brothers and sisters right here the whole certify honey we're gonna all get together collectively and we're gonna come up with a list of all the reparations ops that's what we're gonna call it the reparations ops and we're gonna identify everybody who's out here trying to run fake games on our reparations because as I said before, y'all know, you got someone who's going to try to steal and someone who's going to try to stop. The person out there who's trying to stop your reparations, that person is blatant. It's kind of like the Republicans. They just out there in the open with their shit. But now you got a lot of motherfuckers trying to rock you to sleep. And what's the main way they try to rock you to sleep with reparations? Is to come out and say they support reparations. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, family. Yes, indeed. The new opposition to reparations is people who say that they support reparations. Let me say that one more time for the Black Alpha Network. The main opposition against reparations is the person coming out and saying that he supports reparations. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing all these fake ass groups, these fake ass committees, these fake ass politicians, and the first thing out their mouth is, I support reparations. See, you expecting somebody to come in and say, I don't support reparations. I'm against reparations. Reparations is bad. That's what you expecting somebody to walk through that front door and say, family, I told you, ain't nobody walking through that front door with open opposition. Being overt with your hatred of foundational black American, typically that comes after your covertness done got exposed. A motherfucker wants to come in covert. Yes, indeed. See, we not the fleers and the jock boss. All right, we not jock bombing all over the goddamn place. People don't come to us and say, man, fuck y'all. We ain't with none of that shit. They ain't gonna say that. They ain't gonna say that. They ain't got it in them to talk like that. They know better when it comes to certified foundational black Americans. So anytime somebody knows better than to come at you with that smoke and they ain't got that smoke, not that upfront smoke, hell to the no. They gotta come in through that back door. We always talking about how people try to undermine us. They have to ambush us. They have to confuse us. They've never done anything to us directly because they know what comes along with it. And that goes all the way across the board from race soldiers to politicians. So if you can't come at somebody direct, you gotta come at them indirect. If you can't speak to somebody factually, you got to tell a lie. Well, there ain't no motherfucking lies detected when we speak. So we see the con game in the hustle. And once we spot and we identify that con game, then all of a sudden they start saying things like, we support reparations. We want to help y'all get reparations. We for y'all getting reparations. We got people who call into our space. No lie. I ain't lying. A motherfucker called into our space not too long ago. Trailer Park Matt. All right. And the first thing out his mouth is how he wants to help us get reparations. After we exposed him and roasted his ass for about two minutes, next thing you know, he said he don't want us to get reparations. You know why? Because he didn't want us to get reparations from the jump. But he thought he was going to come in with that cosplay. He thought he was going to come in with that camouflage. He thought he was going to come in and try to be a friend. Remember, enemies of our community always come in endearing. Yes, Malcolm X told us this in the 1960s, and y'all know I always refer to this because our master teacher, our master scholar, and our brother, Malcolm X, said it best. Some people gonna come with a bite and a smile, and some people gonna come with a bite and a growl. Malcolm said that in the 60s, and it is still prevalent today. And that is exactly what's prevalent in terms of our reparations claim and this reparations movement. A lot of people are coming into the reparations movement, y'all, saying that they support reparations. Y'all know there been a lot of W's that have been hopping in our Twitter spaces. And what's the first thing they've been saying? 
They've been saying that they reparations candidates and they run it on a reparations platform. And then when you peel back the layers, they are absolutely against reparations. It's just you got to say you support it in order to confuse the people. Well, we are not confused people. We are black folks who know exactly what we about. We know exactly where we're going and we know exactly how we want to get it. And that means your ass going to give it up or you're going to get that shit took like black alphas always saying. So they come in and they say how they support reparations. They might even start throwing out money. Oh, yeah, they'll throw out a couple dollar figures. And to somebody who's not intelligent enough, it sounds very good. That one lady, that Marie Williams, Marine Williams, whatever, the lady from California, we already exposed her. She came out and said she has a $100 million plan for reparations. $100 million for a trillion dollar plus debt. She offered us $100 million. That'd be like you work seven days a week and somebody offers you a $50 bill. That's basically what it is in terms of our lineage, in terms of what we created. I mean, when you create the United States of America, I want United States of America money. Don't give me that chump change that you got out your piggy bank. And she came in, she twisted it up. She put some ribbons and some bow ties on it, a little cherry on top, made it sound real good. Say, I'm going to give y'all a hundred million dollars and then I'm going to give it all to the leaders in the community and they're going to disperse it. We broke that down in our last episode, Repo Faker. Remember, you got a lot of Repo Fakers out here. You got reparations this then you got repo faking this and these repo faking this been popping out the woodwork just like we knew they would and she's one of the main ones as well as a couple others y'all remember that w lady she was running for something in like new hampshire something on the east coast she was coming out a year ago saying she was running for reparations that little penguin dude in chicago he said he was running for reparations all of it was bullshit and they not running for reparations they're running to steal or to stop your reparations there go that biting a smile, biting a growl again. It's the same tactic that the dominant society's been using. And one of the best ways they do it is they put forth a fake political candidate or a fake political social activist group. Black Lives Matter was saying the same shit. Oh, we out here to stop police brutality. Next thing you know, they out here getting billions of dollars worth of donations and building houses for themselves. It's always some we're here to help y'all shit. That's why we draw a motherfucking line. That's why we stand in the winner's circle. That's why we put that no trespasser sign in the front door. You do that shit everything good we don't have to look outside the circle because it's been proven historically that whenever we start looking outside the circle for a friend or we start looking outside the circle for a buddy the motherfuckers come in acting like they your buddy and next thing you know they leaving with your money <laughs> so i don't need no buddy i want my money and that's the type of time we on so the NAACP, they came out and they said, oh, we got a good reparations plan and we're going to give reparations to everybody. We support it. We support it. We support it. We support it. But then when they started talking about numbers out in San Francisco, when they start talking about giving five million dollars to black folks for reparations claims in a lump sum, who is the first people to jump out the window as opposition? Yeah, the NAACP. Yes, they were. The NAACP came out quick as hell. Proposed reparations packets suggesting a one-time lump sum payment of $5 million for eligible black San Francisco people. They say San Franciscans or whatever the fuck. People from San Francisco, black folks, certified foundational black Americans, descendants of slavery. They said they got an unlikely opposition. This is how the W publications are writing it. They said they're saying, wow, an unlikely opposition came out. Who is this unlikely opposition to reparations for foundational black Americans? It's the NAACP. Why NAACP don't you support it? And then what does the NAACP do? They come out and they say what I said earlier. They're going to talk about money. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just going to be money allocated to places they know ain't going to move the fucking needle. Now, if it comes to the people of color, if it comes to the minorities, they out here moving mountains to get them everything. When it comes to us, they can't move the needle one inch. So that shows you who they really support. And we've been knowing who they really support since day motherfucking one. And we're going to continue to expose that shit for what they are. So they come out and they had a complete counter proposal. They was like, no money. I mean, telling y'all, they was out here trying to break their goddamn back to stop money. They seen money and they seen numbers and they was like, hell no. Nah. See, it's easy for these motherfuckers to say they support you when it comes to reparations, when that money is across town. As that money gets closer and closer, and that money crosses the street and that money gets closer and closer to where we at then you're gonna start seeing the real desperate folks dr claude anderson said it best he said it's gonna be black leadership that comes out against reparations because black leadership or shall we say misleadership they're the main ones working for the dominant society the second group you gotta deal with are gonna be black folk you're gonna have all kind of black folk in this country gonna be opposed to reparation for black for, for, yes, for you exactly. 
They're gonna be jumping out. <laughs> they're gonna be jumping out. They're gonna be jumping out of the woodwork. They're gonna be jumping out of woodwork because they're scared to death. They're just as scared now as they were in 1860. They're gonna say we don't have anything, and, and when, when we ask for something, they they'll take away what we got, and we don't have it, but they'll take nothing away from us. And so. And you're gonna have that group that's always scared, and they're always gonna say it's better for us to have nothing than you try to get something, because that way they'll take us back to nothing, which is where we are already. So, so watch out for that group. They're gonna be coming out. The other group you're gonna come out against, you're gonna be a lot of your black leadership in America. The black leadership gonna come out of the walls. Whites are gonna pay a lot of blacks to come out against reparation for black folk. Okay. And that's the difference. You got some folks who say that they're running on a reparations platform, but in reality, they're just running interference on our reparations, and we know the difference. You know I'm always on record saying this, quote it like I spoke it. Reparations is like a designated driver. Once you give somebody your keys, they gonna take you wherever the fuck they wanna take you. So you gonna see all of these different politicians, all these different fake ass advocacy groups popping up and they gonna come to us and say, hey, FBA, hey, Certified Black Society, let me get your reparations keys. I'll get you home safe tonight, just hand it over. We all friends, we all brothers, I'm running on a reparations platform and soon as you hand the motherfuckers over your keys, your reparations is going to the Ukraine. So watch out for the designated drivers and watch out for all these motherfuckers running on a fake reparations platform, but in reality, they're running interference on our reparations reparations see it that's why we say the code is a leader see when the code is a leader you don't have to worry about misleadership you don't have to worry about black lives matter the naacps or in cobra or narc you ain't got to worry about al sharpton's perm or jesse jackson's wheelchair you ain't got to worry about none of that shit when you know that the code is the leader so anybody running around here saying they're the leader or they're the mamas of the community then you already know that they're against the community so when they see us talking about reparations in terms of dollars, they're like, oh, we ain't worried about that. We'll get upset and we'll run interference when the shit gets real because they got to make it look like they down for us until the last second. At the very last second is when they want to jump in and say, no, no money. Stop, stop, stop. And that's exactly what the NAACP did. Soon as they see money was coming up and our brothers and sisters in the black grassroots, because remember, the black grassroots are the only people keeping the lights on and carrying the weight for the community. Anything that gets done in our community that is beneficial to the welfare of our society is gonna come from the black grassroots no mainstream no boule fuck no nah, never not one time they're done disqualified anything that gets done for us by us will come from the black grassroots so once the black grassroots said fuck the NAACP we gonna make this something real for ourselves and they start going to these task force and they start going to these committees then the NAACP got scared then the NAACP got shook and then that phone rang yep family y'all already know what that phone is and y'all already know who's calling. And y'all know what the number is. It is 1-900-C-O-O-N. And when that 1-900-C-O-O-N phone rang, the NAACP picked up that guy, Anus Brown. He picked up and they said, them black grassroots folks out there in California, they talking real money, Anus. Anus, we gonna need you to go ahead and run interference, Anus. What the hell you doing, Anus? Get out the wheelchair and put the walker down, Anus and get out there and stop them black grassroots folks from getting to the money. That's what we're paying you for, anus. That's why you have tax exemption, anus. That's why we give you all of the tangibles that you need so you can stop these black folks and you can uplift and advance all the color folks. And anus ran out there, put his walker down, he said, we oppose reparation now. We don't want reparation, we want taxi cabs, Uber drives, door dashes, free education, the same fucking bullshit every fucking time, family. It's always something that ain't got nothing to do with money. Allocating money to any place that is not my bank account does not count, period. If you ain't allocating money to my bank account, then them ain't reparations. You cannot allocate money to an HBCU and say that's for black folks. You cannot allocate money to a DoorDash or to Uber and say that's reparations. That ain't reparations. And I don't give a fuck how many times you say it. I don't give a fuck how many times you run the CNN, NBC, or ABC. That shit ain't reparations. And it has been rejected by Certified Black Society. And that's why we're putting together that reparations watch list. Yeah, all the ops better beware because we own them. Black grassroots style. So Anus came out and he gave all these other deflections and distractions about where we should get money. And somebody made a point not too long ago. When you start speaking about money 
in terms of HBCUs, you're basically saying black folks who are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, especially the ones in their 50s and 60s, who have already went to school, who have already went through the workforce, some of them have already retired, you saying they should go back to school. So what if you're a black person who already went to school? Or what if you're a black person who already worked your whole career and retired? Your reparations money is going to an HBCU, so you're gonna have to unretire and go back to school and go back to the workforce, something you did 30 fucking years ago? That's what reparations is for them? Hail to the no. Reparations ops will be spotted. Reparations ops will be G-checked. We told them it's certified season. Motherfuckers gonna have to make a decision real quick. You got a choice. The cooning options are very limited. Either you gonna go on the side of the real or you gonna go on the side of the fake. You gonna be certified and you gonna be counterfeit but ain't gonna be no more straddling the fence. We too intelligent for that. You gotta be a fool if you believe somebody who's straddling the fence. If somebody is telling you up is down and right is left at the same exact time, if you believe them, you a damn fool. And that's the old generations. I'm sorry, that's what it was. But collectively, they believed any little lie that any motherfucker told them. We don't go for that shit. We calling people out before they even say the bullshit. Before they even fix their fucking coon lips, we already know what they about to say. Before they twist their tether ass teeth, we know what they about to say. We know what game motherfuckers is trying to run on us. And just knowing the game somebody runs on you, that gives you the advantage and that gives you power over them. And that's why this is about black empowerment. It comes in a lot of different ways and calling out the bullshit is the first step. Speaking of calling out the bullshit, that dinosaur, Triceratops, Anus Brown, he went on CNN and he was trying to straddle a fence, trying to kind of backtrack what he said and trying to glitter it up, because they'll always do that, family. They'll always say some anti shit, but then they'll try to make it sound intellectualized. They like to intellectualize their lies because it just sounds better. They'll be like, well, we believe that 2.59 of the statistics prove that reparations on an immediate clause means that the collective unity of the world, man, shut the fuck up, give me my money. Malcolm X said, make it plain for a reason. That is two Malcolm X quotes today on the Black Alpha Cash, y'all. Gotta love it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you. Malcolm X said it best. He not only said people come with a bite and a smile and a bite and a growl, he also said, make it plain. Make it plain because the more they try to overcomplicate our reparations, the more they're trying to get us away and run interference on our reparations. The overcomplication of this right here is one of their main tactics because they think they're just going to tire you out by throwing a bunch of numbers at you, citing a bunch of statistics, saying, I got the data. Anytime they run the I got the data game and they give you a bunch of numbers instead of a bunch of evidence, then you know they full of shit. I got another quote from my brother, Dr. Kaba Hiawatha Kamene. He says it best, follow the evidence. Somebody can try to give you their version of the truth. Somebody can try to give you their version of facts. But if you watch the evidence, it covers everything. So the Triceratops Anus Brown, he went on CNN and he was trying to backslide, do the electric slide, backtrack, do the coon walk. He did everything, the coon walk front, back, side to side. But he's given these fake illogical reasons why he was against reparations. And nothing he said added up. And brothers and sisters didn't fall for it. And that's why we on their neck. And that's why we're gonna continue to apply pressure because anytime you hear some bullshit like this, call it out. The president of the San Francisco NAACP and the pastor of the Third Baptist Church, Reverend, Reverend Amos C. Brown. Dr. Brown, thanks so much. Hold on, man, I'm sorry, y'all. Sorry for the brief stop. You see, she already came out the gates on some bullshit. Pastor, Reverend, the fucking Deacon Church or whatever. See, that's what we are talking about. He's trying to give us them Joel Osteen reparations, all right? The one that his W Jesus wants to give to him. And let me tell you, that goes to people of color and massa, and it doesn't come to foundational black Americans. So anytime somebody's running around here trying to speak as some type of advocate for the community, but the first thing they cite themselves as is your pastor or your reverend, man, that is 1972 gang. Because the black church, the collection plate, the pulpit, all them days is over. Cut my check. Pastor. Much for being here. So five million dollars to every black resident. That sounds good to me. That sounds like something. Uh, that sounds like a plan that everyone would like. Who would be a recipient of that? So why don't you like that plan? Notice she said that's something everyone would like. Who would be a recipient? Because you know damn well she don't like it. She's on his side. To be honest with you. She's just trying to make it look like she's pushing back. See, you got the dominant society straddling the fence and you got all their minions straddling the fence because they all trying to game us. Let's listen to Pastor. Let me correct something. The board has not agreed to a my $5 million plan. Yeah, it's a proposal. I, I, I know, I know. 
It's a proposal, but why don't you like the proposal? Uh, because it is. Uh, 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 he can't even talk. A laughing stop around this nation. And representatives of it have indicated it was not based on any formula. It was not thought uh, out logically. So that we should not be teasing and tantalizing African Americans. We are in trouble in this city. We need action now. We've had far too many studies, too many analyses, too many suggestions. And if the board was serious about that, this past Tuesday, they would have been principal reported cash payments and suggesting a plan for payment, even though as some say we have a deficit, we can't do anything now. Well, deficits don't let us up. And even in Germany, Germans pay. I'm so, I'm looking for Okay, what the fuck is he talking about? What the fuck is Triceratops talking about? First off, he didn't even stand up in this whole interview. So I wonder if he's in his wheelchair while he's talking. Because y'all know them some wheelchair on Washington motherfuckers. Somehow he starts talking about Germany. We talking about San Francisco, California. And he starts talking about Germany. We're talking about a proposal of $5 million dollars. And he starts talking about the deficit. We're talking about reparations in the form of cash payments. And he didn't mention reparations or cash one goddamn time. If you're against reparations, just say you are. Great, 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 grandpa. Just say the shit. Matter of fact, he should want reparations more than anybody because he looks like he was old enough to actually been out in them fields picking the cotton. We talking about the reparations for the descendants of slavery. He looks like he was a member of slavery. He's that goddamn old. You should be wanting reparations more than anybody, Grandpa. But yet you trying to fight it. Come on, come on, man. And this is what Dr. Claw talked about, about the fake black leadership who are going to come out and they're going to try to stop us from getting money because nothing scares them old Negroes more than black folks with money. Black folks with money disrupts them so goddamn bad because they think that the dominant society is going to take away their catfish nuggets. That's really what it is. Let's go there. Let's keep it real. What we say, let's keep it a buck. They're afraid that the dominant society is going to take away them catfish nuggets. They're going to take away them butter biscuits because we get reparations. And they are basically picking catfish nuggets over cash payments. They're picking butter biscuits over cash payments. If not, he wouldn't be saying that shit. So this is another reparations op as well as the whole NAACP are reparations ops and they can come out here and they can glitter it up and give us every reason why all the money's bad and they can come out and give us all the reasons why we shouldn't get it. We know exactly the reason and we see it for what it truly is and is that he is somebody who believes that his butter biscuit stash is going to be compromised if these black folks get them millions of dollars. That's what it's all about. Butter biscuits over money, the same way they used to pick butter biscuits over freedom. That's just the modern day version of a C double O N. In fact, it was NACD branch that introduced the idea in 2019. So we can't be like Jack and the Bear, making tracks, but getting nowhere. Even this U.S. Congress of this nation has not acted on reparations in principle, and 70 percent of the nation are against it. Now is the time for all fair-minded, informed, loving, just citizens. What? Join us as African Americans. What? And support us as we supported reparations for the Japanese and for the Jewish community. That's the bottom line issue. We are not against cash payments, but we want sincere action and not optics. So you don't whoa 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 first off what the fuck the sincere loving compassionate citizens got to do with my foundational black american reparations money not a goddamn thing this is why the pastors need to stay at home this is why the deacons and the reverends need to stay at home don't bring me that joe olstein shit in my reparations claim the first thing out his mouth is him saying how everybody needs to support us who gives a fuck about who supports us i don't want support only support i need is foundational black americans see you're still trying to find a friend didn't i say earlier keep your buddy i want my money are you not surprised that he's out here talking about buddies 
I don't give a damn about any other group out here trying to support us, help us, give us assistance. Fuck them. Matter of fact, they can be as mad as they want. And I'm going to be happy counting my money at the fucking bank. That's the problem. They willing to stop everything we doing, put everything on pause and on hold. He's sitting there talking about some. Well, we can't just sit here and talk but not go nowhere. You ain't going nowhere because you still waiting on a friend. They trying to bring that sit in that we are the world that can't we all just get along shit to a reparations claim. Reparations is not about friends. Reparations is not about buddies. Reparations is not about comrades. Reparations is about my lineage and about our paper. That's that old shit again coming out. And by the way, did he say NAACP? I couldn't even understand when he said NAACP. He like, we are the seminaries, man. <laughs> what the, what? I had to run that, matter of fact, fuck that. Let's play that again. Y'all tell me, did he say NAACP or did he just say the whole fucking alphabet in one word? Hold on, this motherfucker can't even talk right. So you know he need to sit out the reparations conversation. Hold on, but y'all tell me, did he say NAACP or NAACZV? He don't even know his own SHIELD organization. Listen, y'all tell me. And not intentionality. We've talked too much about reparations. In fact, it was the NACD branch that What? The Hold on, one more time. And for payment, Germans paid I installed. I'm looking for, and the NACP is looking for. What? I promise you he said the NACP. In fact, it was the NACD branch. In fact, it was the NACD branch. It was the NACD branch. The NACP is looking for. The NACP is looking for. That motherfucker done left out letters. <laughs> he don't even remember how many letters is in it. <laughs> I don't even know if he said any, I think a, a fucking Z and a nine and a five and shit was in that statement. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. And he don't even know what the fuck he's talking about because all he's doing is following his orders as a minion and a shield organization for the Democratic Party so they can try to stop, prevent, and run interference on our reparations claim. So he comes out there and says the NAAC5, <laughs> the NAAJK, <laughs> that motherfucker make Joe Biden sound like he's speaking English. God damn. Hell no. Disqualified. Stay on out of our reparations claim. It ain't got nothing to do with you. So in translation, put them to work as we proceed because we ain't got time to sit here and roast. They done. They, they ain't got no power anyway. This is a desperate move. They just out here reaching, trying to grab hold of anything they can, but it ain't working. That's why the people on CNN was sitting there giving them work. You sitting there getting work about reparations from a CNN anchor. Karen is giving you work about reparations. Why she's straddling the goddamn fence herself. So you got a whole bunch of bullshit, didn't we say? You have tether on tether crime, pan-African on pan-African crime, pan-African on tether crime, Democrat on Republican crime, liberal on conservative crime, and now apparently you have Democrats on Democratic shield crime. All in one big ass scenario. It's a crazy game. Shit wild in the streets, y'all, I told you. But that's all because we've been on code. That is the after effects of us being on code. See, back in the old days when folks wasn't on code, they didn't really know what it looked like. This is what on code looks like. When we're on code, you see a lot of strange shit. You see folks teaming up with each other that will never be on the same team. You see folks fighting each other that used to be on the same team. You see people having public meltdowns, public arguments, airing their dirty laundry, all types of shit. Because we have been putting them all on notice and they cannot handle that. We upset the apple card, we threw a wrench in the game and we turned everything upside down. And that shows you that the whole country is based upon keeping us as the permanent underclass. But when that underclass refuses to stay down, and that underclass rises up, then whatever was up comes down and whatever was down comes up. And that's exactly where we are, standing on top, getting to the money and doing it our own way. Yes, indeed. And when we talk about doing things our own way, like we said, one of the first things is speaking the real, calling shit out, no lies detected. And that's all we do. We speak the real with no lies detected. And everybody else just has to sit back and they have to analyze because we ain't stopping. Hell no. That's one thing about this generation, family. That's one thing about us. We have power. We are motivated. We are focused more than ever. I mean, we have not stopped. A lot of people thought the reparations movement right now would slow down. They thought we would say, man, fuck this. I'm going to take a nap. I'm gonna lay down for another 30 years. No, we ain't did none of that shit. Brothers and sisters got energy, full energy. I'm talking about pedal to the flow, full throttle. We have not stopped. If anything, we've gotten stronger. And that's how it is, no days off. So when we get to regulating, we regulate so many people at one time, this shit is like a sport. And we win it, cause we the champs. And everybody's sitting back and they watching and they're analyzing it. So when we call out all these people trying to run interference on whatever it is we're doing, because it's not just reparations. They don't want the foundational black American family to go. They don't want foundational black American money to go. They don't want foundational black American excellence to go. They try to stop us in every single area where we are, because every single area that we're at, we're excellent in it. 
And that's the shit they cannot stand. They cannot stand that shit. And we make a living off of pissing these people off. What do I always say, family? I said, our job is to keep the haters hating and to keep the pocket watchers pocket watching. And when you talk about people pocket watching us and people hating on us, you see this shit goes on outside of these 50 states. We resonate right here, but our impact is global. So when you look around, you see folks talking about foundational black Americans all over the planet. Every day, there's a new TikTok tether and they out here hating. Oh, hell yeah, they hating every single day. If you ever want to see anti-foundational black American hatred, hop your ass on social media, in particular TikTok. There is a TikTok tether every day. And I'm talking about from the top to the bottom. And you see it all the way across the board. They always got something to say about FBA. And it ain't just folks from Africa. You starting to see the black folks from the UK. And they're in the same block fix in America. Don't have a culture. But we eat spaghetti. And we have a culture even though we are up underneath the British W mod. They sitting up underneath Buckingham Palace talking about they got a culture. They over there dressing like us, wearing hats from Atlanta, New York, and Chicago, acting like they got a culture. Talking shit about us in a polite ass accent. Once again, I, family, I said it. Certified Foundation of Black Americans, we not really intimidated by polite gangster shit, all right? You sound too nice to be talking about anybody. You just need to talk good about people because your accent says that you ain't ready to bust a grape in the fruit fight. So quit talking about FBA, all right? You ain't moving us, all right? Have you some tea and carpets and shut the fuck up. But you see it from everybody all the way across the board. You got your random street tether talking shit. And then you got artists talking shit. You got Afro beats. As a matter of fact, hey, speaking of Afro beats, y'all seen what Burner Boy said. And we ain't even gonna play the clip. Y'all done heard the shit. And we can barely hear it. Music's in the background. Fuck dude. But listen, Burner Boy, he came out and he said, yo, typical, y'all don't have a base. Y'all don't have an American. Y'all notice these motherfuckers turned into scientists whenever it comes to our condition. You ever notice that? Whenever it comes into our condition, they understand science, they understand economics, they want to turn into your lawyer, they want to turn into your publicist, everything. But you start asking about the problems over there in their country is, uh, 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 they can't even answer it. Anytime it comes to foundational black American business, everybody turns into something they're not. They talk about money, they don't know money. They start talking about the stock market, they don't know the stock market. They start talking about wealth and prosperity when all the wealth and prosperity in their homelands, they're given over to the colonizer. They're not in a position to talk about certified foundational black Americans. One, it's because we're living better than them. Two, it's because we built where we're from. And three, it's because we never left. And that's the difference between them and us. So Akon, this guy is struggling over in his homeland, running scams across the whole fucking continent. And mind you, I've seen Africans come out and say that Don Quarius Akon is a scam artist with his fake Wakanda shit. So he's over there using that tribalism and backstabbing shit on his own people. But over here, he wants to turn into some type of economist. Same thing with Burner Boy. Burner Boy ain't said shit with any substance in his records other than biting foundational black American culture. From the way he dresses, to the way he talks, the way his music sounds, all Afro Beats is, is a Walmart version. Fuck, it ain't even a Walmart. It's a Dollar General version of foundational black American R&B rhythm and blues. That's it. And that's why when they try to throw that shit on NBA All-Star Weekend, that shit had the worst ratings of all time. The ratings was in the trash can. They was underneath the fucking trash can because folks was not going for it. We got all the great artists right here. We got all the great music right here. We ain't got to fly over there and hear no remixed Dollar General version of our own shit. Moving on. So Burner Boy comes out and he says the typical bullshit in which we've all heard that we don't have a culture and ethnicity. We don't have a base. Da, 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 da. He needs to worry about his own homeland because over there in Nigeria, they're not living too good. But this era right here, we don't let shit slide. So if you say some bullshit, you're going to get regulated. And we see once we get to regulating, these motherfuckers can't handle the heat. So he came out and wrote a whole statement. Once again, just like Mr. Dinosaur from the NAACP was trying to backtrack and straddle the fence at the same time, Burner Boy tried to do the same shit. He write a whole letter talking about some, man, y'all's being means to me now. I, I do support y'all. See, it ain't never I support you with your initial statement. It's always I support you after you done regulated my ass. So it ain't really about us, is it? It's really that you got your feelings hurt. Just like Dr. Kubar, they be in their tether feelings and shit. He was in his tether feelings. So he comes out and he makes a statement and he's trying to backtrack. And at the same time, he's trying to play victim. So, you know, they be watching the dominant society. Didn't we say the tactics of a tether is the same tactics that you see from the dominant society? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm keeping it real. Y'all going to agree. 90% of tethers I see, they act like W women. Don't they? They get their same tactics from feminism. You have a big ass six foot five 
black tether and he'll be in here acting like Karen. Using Karen tactics, sounding like Becky. I don't know if this motherfucker is from Nigeria or if his ass is from Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> I can't call it because he's talking, walking and playing victim just like Karen. They be saying some shit straight out the Brady Bunch all the time. You call out a tether, he gonna sound like Becky in two seconds because you see they over here watching them feminist ways. So Burner Boy put out a whole feminist tether version of a backtrack statement. And I'm gonna read it to y'all right here cause y'all know we stay with that certified on this side. He says, it's sad to see that in the year 2023, there are still such black people who prefer to stay divided and conquered. Maybe it's because of my accent or something. Man, get the fuck out of here. If you don't get the fuck out of here, that sound like Karen saying, maybe it's because I'm a girl. You don't like women. I told you, tethers get all of their tactics from feminism. He straight up sound like he about to go on the Me Too march. <laughs> he sound like Terry Crews. Oh, and by the way, you notice that they always play the 50-50 game? So he's saying, well, it's sad that some black folks got a problem today and want to stay divided. But they don't never say that about their own homeland. They don't never say that about the black folks who go over there and get treated with disrespect. They don't never say it about the black folks who go over there and get harmed. They don't never say it about all of these million TikTok tethers who pop up and they disrespect foundational black Americans past, present and future. He doesn't say that about the black folks all throughout the diaspora, in particular his continent, that show nothing but spite, jealousy, and envy for foundational black Americans. If you literally put together a true list of who is divided and who says what about the other person, I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of that shit is them talking down on us. And isn't that a dominant society tactic? Y'all know how the dominant society, they'll initiate a problem and then they'll say that we started it. That's what they do. That's the first thing. Boy, that's old. They've been doing that shit for eons over here. That's what I'm saying. I don't know who they think they fooling. You better go pull that shit on Mr. Mutombo, burner boy. And by the way, like I said before, what would happen if somebody called you boy in America? What happens if you call a certified on code foundational black American boy? What's going to happen to you? Is it going to be good or is it going to go hella wrong for you? Yeah, he running around calling himself boy. So you already know what type of time he on and it ain't good time. So you see the dominant society all in his thoughts. You see the dominant society all in their mind. Mind you, you'll see foundational black American culture all in their face, all in their clothes, all in how they dress. But you see the dominant society all in their thoughts, all in their words. That's the difference. Look like foundational black Americans culturally, talk and act like the dominant society mentally. That's your typical tether. And that's exactly what Burner Boy is. Burner Boy clearly wants to look like us, but he wants to think like Brad. He wants to think like Karen. He wants to be a part of Karen's movement. It's that same refugee status we was trying to warn Dr. Kubar about and he found out the hard way. So no, we're not gonna play that. It's a 50-50 problem. Anytime somebody initiates issues on us, they always gotta say it's a 50-50 issue. Because instead of them taking 100% of the blame for what they started, they say, well, let me just take half the blame. And that's somebody who is guilty. So now all the division comes from them. And you see how he's saying that we're divided for calling out his bullshit statement about us. So when we clap back, then all of a sudden it's divided. It ain't ever divided when they got all that shit they say about us for no reason. No, that ain't divided. No, uh -uh. nobody says anything about that. But soon the certified foundational black Americans clap back for one second. These motherfuckers want to run out the building and cry foul. <laughs> Burner boy out here sounding like one of the Bill Cosby accusers. <laughs> but he goes on. Oh, yeah, it didn't even get worse. Oh, his playing victim don't stop. After he said all that shit about people wanting to be divided, he says it must be my accent or something. You see how he threw that in there? Y'all see that, right? Y'all see that little slick shit? How he's basically trying to say we're xenophobic and we picking on him because of his accent. Don't that sound like Karen? Don't that sound like Becky? Oh, you're just being mean to me because I have an accent. He had to throw in some xenophobic shit. Oh man, he's being very condescending and very backhanded with his statement. So now we picking on him because of his accent. Not because he disrespected our lineage, heritage, cultures, and our ancestors. No, 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 no. Uh-uh, it can never be that because you know, they don't do nothing wrong. It's because he's got an accent is what we're doing. But then he follows up and says, I never said you are African and I never said that you're not American. No, you just applied it, homeboy. I also did not say that Africa is part of heaven. No, you just implied that as well. Just like Akon be doing. Trying to hit us with the leave America because we live in Wakanda and Wakanda so much better than where y'all at. We know what you're doing. We know a sneaky motherfucker when we see him. 
okay? And then he hit us with this. He said, you deserve all the land and reparations from America, and I am in 100% support of that. Family, didn't we just say that the main person who's trying to stop your reparations is gonna be the person saying that he supports your reparations? Didn't we just say that? Boy, he done fuck with the wrong certifies on the wrong day. Perfect timing. Thank you, Burner Boy. Proving us right again, no lies detected. Doing the same shit that we expect you to do ain't gonna get you nowhere with us. Telling the same lies that everybody else lies ain't gonna get you nowhere with us. Talking that same con game ain't gonna get you no goddamn where with certifies. He don't give a damn about our reparations. He wants to stop our reparations. He don't give a damn about our culture other than stealing it. So everything he said in there, you could tell is a complete fallacy because he started off on some bullshit. You come out saying how people are divided, really undermine this towards us. You come out and you say, maybe it's because of my accent and undermine this to us. And then you say, well, I support reparations though. No, you don't. Because you wouldn't have that type of spite and jealousy if you did. Burn up, boy. Tell that lie to somebody else because we ain't going for it. And don't this sound like one of those prepared statements that a W will say after they done harmed a black person. You know what I'm saying? If like swimming pool Karen or Walmart Karen or some actor actress says the N word and then they put out the prepared statement and goes on the I'm not racist tour. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all know the I'm not racist tour after somebody gets caught saying something when their supremacist Tourette syndrome pops out and they say some shit that they was really thinking. It's just they snap and say it out loud and then they put out the prepared statement and then they go around to Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and they tell everybody how they really are nice. Doesn't that sound like the lineage version of that? Don't that sound like the tether version of that? Don't that sound like the Fleer version of that? He's basically giving us a prepared statement trying to mend the fences because he know he said some shit and he got G-checked for it. So now he's coming out saying a bunch of bullshit trying to combat what we already knew about him all along. But let's continue what he said. He said, all I've ever done is try to make you understand that you have Africa too that loves you and I believe coming together as brothers and sisters is the only way forward for us black people worldwide. You work against the progress of our people worldwide if your goal is to keep us divided. Who you fucking talking to? Who you talking to? You ain't got to lecture us about fucking divided, divisiveness, when you got tribalism all across the goddamn continent. Person on this side of the village hate the person on that side of the village. Person on this side of the desert hates the person on that side of the desert. Person on this side of the jungle hates the person on that side of the jungle. Hate each other so much that you're willing to team up and make cahoots with the colonizer because you hate other black people. We ain't going for no African or anybody in the diaspora trying to lecture us on unity. Ain't motherfucking happening. What it really is is that they're upset that certified foundational black Americans are unified as a lineage and they can't see that see they go home and they see how divided they are and they get jealous they see that foundational black americans are out here representing each other and been doing this since day one they see the same culture that they bite from that culture could only come based on our own unity the fact that our lineage heritage and culture stands together as one we started off this episode of the black alpha cast with an fba family tree roll call they can't do that shit because they start fighting damn right they would hell yeah and they cannot stand that our lineage is together they cannot stand that we call each other brother and sister you notice he said brother and sister right y'all notice that mm -hmm. didn't we say they only call us brother or sister when it comes to reparations they never ever said brother or sister to us until we start talking about cash payments soon as we found reparations they found brother and sister Soon as we seen reparations claims, they start saying brother and sister. Soon as we start saying cash payments, they start saying brother and sister. Before we start talking about money, it was a kata and every other fucking slur they can call us. We don't need no lecture. I'm gonna take a lot of things in life, family, I'm telling you now. But it ain't gonna be no lecture about unity from no damn diaspora. There's hell to the no and there's fuck to the no. And this is both of them. We rocking good over here. We clean on this side. We certify for life, fo L I F E. That's what we do. We started the brother and sister. We started the family tree. We started the lineage, heritage, and culture. They don't. You made it clear that y'all gonna do villages, y'all gonna do tribes, y'all gonna do bloodlines. Y'all said we don't wanna do color. We don't wanna do race. We don't wanna do any of that. So don't come over here and you see that it's been successful for us. The only black people it's been successful for. And now all of a sudden you want to run some type of game on it. Shit.
Burner Boy, you better take that fake Karen Becky Me Too movement ass speech and take it back on to Nigeria and go lecture them because it might go somewhere. But right here, that shit don't go no goddamn where. We good. G double O D. <laughs> Who the fuck you talking to? Becky Boy. Hey, we gonna quit calling him Burner Boy. Nah, you can tell clearly he got feminism and the Me Too movement all in him. That's Becky Boy. Yeah, we hear you, Becky. <laughs> all I ever wanted to do was show you that Africa loves you too. Yeah, go tell that shit to Africa. Because by all accounts, they need that lecture far more than anybody else does. Tribalism gone crazy. Hell yeah. So, Becky boy, you need to go ahead and have you some Joe Law with a smile. Sit your ass down. Oh, hey, and speaking of Joe Law family, did y'all see Ludacris? Did y'all see Luda? Luda put out some type of, and it was TikTok again. I told y'all, boy, they done recruited Luda on some TikTok tell the shit. They got Ludacris talking to a bunch of, I guess it's Afro Beats people. I don't know. I don't know none of them. I don't know none of them. But he got the most fake, forced, prepared little fucking conversation. And he's talking about all his African brothers and we need to come together again telling us. Just get you the biggest satellite in the world and broadcast that shit to everywhere outside America if you want to lecture people on being divided. Okay. Leave us out of that shit. We don't need to pick up that channel. We straight. But Luda got a fucking little video and he's with all these guys and he's sitting there talking about some man, this is my brother and we need to get together. It's almost like a public service announcement. Luda done went off the deep end. Nah, this shit look contrived, forced and everything. This was from like the, the office of trying to get foundational black Americans to accept Tether's campaign. <laughs> That's what that shit came across as. And I guess Luda's trying to expand or something because he was out there straight up caping for them. And then at the end of the video, he said the funniest shit ever. I'm not lying, fam. This shit came across so cringe, so forced. All the African dudes is in the back, me mugging and Luda's talking. Luda literally looks like he's reading this shit off a of fucking script. And then at the end, matter of fact, fuck that. Y'all listen. Wondering what I'm doing in Ghana. Let me tell you something. If I'm ever in Ghana, if I'm in Gabon, if I'm in Nigeria, I'm home. I'm with family. Sarkodie, Jackie. I'm going to tell you, Joe Boy, Black Bones, my boy Pathos. They came to see me because we family. And right now, I just want to settle this once and for all. Uh-oh, listen, y'all. Who has the best Joe Love rice? Senegal, Nigeria, or Ghana? Talk to me, my brother. I asked you the same question yesterday. Uh-huh. I could read through your mind. You reading through my mind? Yes. What did I say? You know the answer already. You know it's Nigerian Jalof. Let me see what happened. Nigerian Jalof. What the fuck? Hey, he literally asked that man who has the best Jolof rice. He literally did. Now, when we say some shit like that, they be getting mad. How dare you talk about our Jolof? How dare you? I got an accent or something? They be pulling that Becky boy shit, right? <laughs> they be getting real pissed off, all in their feelings. He asked that man. First off, he went through a whole script, I'm telling you. Luda was reading that shit off a teleprompter. He kept trying to hit you with the, we're home. Y'all notice that? It's that same thing, I'm telling y'all. This is like the fucking office of foundational black Americans, please accept Tether so they can steal y'all shit campaign. He keeps pounding in the words home and brother. Anytime you keep hearing them say, brother, brother, home, home, know that's coming from somewhere else. They're trying to undo everything that we've done in the last five years with delineating. So that's why they keep hitting you with that. If they say brother or home more than three times in a conversation, then you already know that's a play. But at the end of the shit, he asked them, do y'all have the best Joe Loft rice? Now, if we said the same motherfucking thing, they be in this motherfucker mad, making prepared statements, joining the Me Too movement. They be marching out here against foundational black Americans. Goddamn shame. But that right there, again, is proving foundational black Americans correct. So may I say this? Can I say this, family? So are we divisive when we talk about Joe Loft? Because Ludacris just talked about Joe Loft too. Is he divisive? Oh, and to Becky boy, are we divisive for what we say about tethers? Because Dr. Kubar Vasquez, your Pan-African brother, he said exactly what we said. As a matter of fact, he said it even worse. So if foundational black Americans are divisive, then so is Dr. Kubar and so is Luda because they said the same exact thing. Don't be mad at us and give passes to your brother for saying the same exact words. Foundational black Americans say you get upset. Your brother said, you said, we got the best Nigerian Jolof. They was all cheering. They was cheering. The motherfuckers was cheering in the background. So, you know, it don't really make them that upset. 
It's just that we say these things and on top of us saying that, we say you can't get our money. That's what it's really about. It ain't just about the Joe Loft. It ain't just about the tether. It ain't just about the fleers. It's about the tether, the Joe Loft, and the fleer can't get no dollar dollar bills. That's what the fuck it's really about. So once you tell them N-O, once again, a two letter word does set off the whole earth. You know foundational black Americans got power. You know you got some power that ain't nobody seen when you can say a two letter word and piss off the whole earth. That tells you how exceptional we are. So that two letter word, N-O, no, y'all can't have our money. That makes a motherfucker go from smiling to frowning in two seconds. Where well, they gonna be some smiling to frowning motherfuckers then because we ain't changing a thing. No lies. So when we say that these folks is all over the place and they scattered and us being on code, got motherfuckers all mixed up, it's like playing dice. We done took the dice, shook it up and threw them. That's pretty much how everybody is when we get on code. They all shook up. They don't know what to do, what to say. That's why they're coming after each other. Y'all see how they say contradicting statements from each other? Dr. Kubar says this, Luda says this, Becky Boy says that. You got one tether who says he wants to steal our money. The other tether says he wants to stop our money. One calls us Akata, one calls us brother. They don't know what the fuck to do. The opposition is shook. You got a guy who came out and he was talking about the president of Ghana, all right? There was like a Zoom chat meeting or some shit, but it leaked and we got it. Certified black exclusive. There was a meeting that came out and a guy from Ghana was going in on the president. Because remember they had that year of the return scam? Remember that? So they can basically get us to help them with their tourism. And that's the same thing they're trying to do right now with our reparations. They want us to get our reparations and then come over there and invest in Africa so they can basically just take our shit, right? Anyway, a Zoom chat came out where a guy was mad and he was going off on the president of Ghana saying, we don't need the FBA. He said FBA by name. And by the way, side note, let me make this clear. Notice how during the whole OMB situation, during all the different classifications and designations for our lineage, I kept saying that foundational black Americans is the true, sincere, grassroots term that galvanizes the people. Not ADOS, not Freedmen, foundational black Americans. And how do I know? Because I'm one of the brothers who've been on the front line and I see the hatred and the pushback that foundational black Americans receive. And we know for a fact, whoever gets the most pushback from the dominant society is the one that genuinely represents the people. We have spaces and people are calling in talking about FBA. When you look at your social media timeline, it's FBA. When you look at what's trending, it's FBA. When we have a rally or we have a march or we have a protest, it's FBA that everybody's concerned with. I ain't yet seen one person call in talking about you ADOS. They don't even know what the fuck that means. Ain't nobody calling in talking about some, those freedmen, nobody saying that. But what they are saying is foundational black American. And I say foundational black American freedmen if you want to go there. But at the end of the day, you know what is strong. You know what's empowerment based upon the pushback and the resistance that it receives. Well, on this leaked Zoom meeting that we got, you hear this African guy going in on the president of Ghana saying we don't need those foundational black Americans. FBA, not Freeman, not ADOS. He says, we don't need FBA to come over here with their money. So once again, you see everybody going at it. Everybody's fighting upside down, left and right. Shook like a pair of dice in Vegas, double up, 7-Eleven. But at the end of the day, what's in the middle of all that? Foundational black Americans. So you see the tether on tether crime once again, this time coming by way of Ghana. Listen. People shouldn't be crossing, but this is what is happening. You have a Ghanaian president who is not taking care of his own people. His own people cannot go into the presidency at will. His own people cannot do video shoot in his own presidency. But you have foreigners that he's giving more attention to. Do you know why? Because they still believe that these people are, are more superior than them. They believe that they are richer. They believe that they, they believe that they have money. They believe that these people are coming in to help them. Those, these people he's talking about are foundational black Americans. Get that right. That these people, he's talking about FBA. He bought the name drop FBA here in a second, but I want everybody to know so I can frame it. He's speaking about us when he says these people. Oh, and by the way, to Becky boy, that's very, very united, ain't it? Yeah, but they ain't ever gonna say shit about that. But listen, he further goes in on the president of Ghana saying we don't need these people. What do you mean you people? He says, we don't need these people coming over here because they're not better than us. Listen get out from their poor poverty into a rich environment. They believe that these people are the only people that can construct Ghana or Sierra Leone and all these places. Other countries do not depend on these people. These other countries do not. 
other countries believe that their own people can develop those these countries, not FBA and all these places. So I'm blaming. Well, there you go. There go the name drop. Let me run that back one more time. These countries, not FBA and all these places. So I'm blaming Ghanaians for electing a president who do not even care about their own people, his own people. Damn. Damn. More receipts, more receipts, more receipts. That's what we do right here. He said to the president of Ghana, you ain't taking care of your own people, but you want FBA to come over here and to give us their money. Now notice, he said foundational black American. That guy sound like he is in the goddamn village of Ghana. He sound like he is 10 toes down in Ghana, but he's thinking about foundational black Americans. Just like when we have our spaces, people tend to call in from all over the world. And who are they asking about? Who are they talking about? Who are they thinking about? FBA. We're on everybody's mind, family, rent free. What do I always say? We are national, but our effect is global. We go all the way around the world and then back again. That's how powerful we are because we are the number one lineage, heritage, and culture, whether they like it or not. So that shows you right there that he speaks about us from the aspect of these people. I don't even know how many times he said these people. He said these people about as many times as Dr. Kubar said refugee status. And you can say that's on their goddamn mind because they kept repeating it. These people, we don't need these people. When these people, FBA, these people, he kept going in and in about these people. Those people are us. So he doesn't want us coming over there. But guess what? I ain't even that mad at that. I really ain't. Because we don't need to be going over there and we ain't going over there. The fact that he says we should build up our own country is a good thing. That guy, whoever you are, notice I ain't called him a teller. I ain't called him a teller. At least I don't think I did. If I did, I'm going to take it back. That guy right there is speaking about building up his own country. Now, I'm pretty sure he's got spite, jealousy, and envy for foundational black Americans just based on track record. And I base people off a of track record. I don't base people off of hope and wish and coping, okay? Based on track record, he has one of those three about foundational black Americans. But at the end of the day, he's saying what he needs to say. Build your own shit. Build your own country. Because there's going to be a whole list of people over there in Ghana, and they're going to be saying, we need to get the fuck out of here and jock bar to America. And then we can get over there and we can jock bar next to Karen, jock bar next to Ken. Hell, Burner Boy, he jock barred over here to America so he can get next to Karen and Ken. So that guy's speaking the truth or his truth about what he needs to do in his country in Ghana. And he's telling the president that we don't need anybody to help build our country. And the whole year of the return, we all knew that was a hustle plan. That was bullshit. But at the end of the motherfucking day, that's the mentality that we have right here. We stay. We ain't running. We build it. We ain't hide it. We stronger than ever. We ain't folded. And when you got that mentality, then you got that foundational black American mentality. And that's why we go further than everybody else. And it's being picked up by the youth as well. Oh, yeah. Young folks now are understanding what Pan-Africanism hasn't done for us. Time and history will truly show who is down for us and who is against us. And we got to big up this generation and this era. See, the last generation of the old Negroes like Anis Brown in the NAACP, they were selling us this everybody's our friend. Everybody's here for you. They put friendship and buddies and massa and butter biscuits over their own youth. We're not doing that. We're showing the youth how to operate in this world of an anti-black system of supremacy. That's what we're doing. So the young folks are learning more and more every day on how to reject Pan-Africanism. And that's why folks is getting pissed. That's why they're trying to target our children because they understand we are teaching our kids real certified foundational black American empowerment. They cannot go to our kids and say, y'all know y'all should stop fighting for reparations. Y'all know y'all should stop fighting for justice. Black empowerment, what's that? That's what the old civil rights Negroes did. We don't do that shit. Hail to the no. And we're letting them know who's on our side and who's not on our side. See, there's a difference between knowing already when you're young because your elder gave you the information or us. We had to do what? We had to figure it out as we went along. We spent so much time in this generation having to clean house and get rid of all the myths that we were told, all the lies about friends and buddies that the older folks told us. That became a full time job. That's why this generation is full throttle, because we understood we had to learn things. We had to figure out things and then we had to make results on the go. We didn't have time to rest. That's why everybody's mad at us and shit right now. Don't be mad at us because we moving so quick because we were forced to move quick because we had to clean house and whoop ass. And when you're cleaning house and whooping ass at the same time, you know you's a bad motherfucker. And that's exactly what the fuck has went on. And we've done that on top of teaching the young folks, them people ain't got your back, 
them people ain't got your back them people ain't got your back. Now we was told they love you, they love you, they love you hell. Even Massa loves you. The Pan-Africans love you. Everybody loves us. Bullshit. We tell a different story. We tell the truth. And the younger folks are starting to resonate with what we're saying. That's how you do it the right way. You let everybody know what's real and therefore they can see the bullshit when it comes. That's what we specialize in. Regulate. But there was another chat that came out and some young black folks were on a Zoom chat with some people from out the diaspora. And you could tell that the young foundational black Americans, they was like, nah, we ain't really with all that Pan-African stuff. We are gonna go ahead and push that aside because we've been putting them on game. We've been telling them the truth. We ain't been hitting them with that we are the world shit. You see what happens when you let folks know that they in it for self. Oh, and by the way, as they used to teach us, we are the world, can't we all get along? We all just one big people. We've been saying we all we got and that we all we got message is going further now. That we all we got message is what's resonating with the youth. That's why the younger folks are operating from this lineage, separating, regulating, and reparations. That's what the younger folks is on. And the older people cannot stand that shit because they spent 60 years telling us how everybody loves us. And we've been upsetting the apple cart, throwing the wrench in the motherfucking game. So there was a chat and the brothers and sisters who were foundationals, they were in there saying, nah, nah, we cool. Y'all do y'all, we gonna do us and we'll get with y'all if y'all get y'all shit together. And you could tell the other folks that was from the diaspora, they weren't really feeling that too much. You could literally look at the picture. And the foundationals were sitting there smiling and talking because they got their stuff together. And everybody else was like, uh, hold on now. I thought we was all supposed to be friends. They didn't really want to hear that because everybody else gets taught. See what FBA is doing and see what you can take from FBA. I don't care if you're an old tether or you're a young tether. The old tethers tell the young tethers that they got to steal from us. That's why you'll see somebody who's 70 and they'll be talking about money, brother, come home. And then you'll see somebody who's 17 and they'll be saying, money, brother, come home. Trust me, Coonan is generational. Tethers are generational. Fleers are generational. It ain't nothing new. They've been doing this shit for years. They passed down tetherisms. We passed down empowerment. That's why on this chat, our brothers and sisters were speaking a whole different game. And this game was lineage first. Until we unify within our own individual ranks or own individual tribes or ethnic groups or nations. So. Uh, I agree with you, brother. That's the American. Um, I'd agree also. Um, I'm not really, I don't believe that Pan-Africanism would work. I do agree that, like, you know, everybody's not going to come together. We cannot band together all black Americans, but we can try. And I think that because of the cultural differences and the problems there are already, it is wise to focus on your lineage first and then your race. Um, and so I think, yes, we're similar in race, but we need to focus on our ethnicity and big up our ethnicity. Man, certified salute to them three young foundational black Americans right there. They came out the gate. Lineage first, we gonna focus on ourselves, we different. And the Jamaicans and the Nigerians on the panel didn't say nothing. You could look at their faces and they was frowning. Yes, they were. But that's what it's all about. Look at the difference though, fam. Look what the old Triceratops was saying and look what these young black folks were saying. And who's in the middle of both of them? We are. We are the generation, I told you. We are the generation in the era that is changing the world. They're gonna look back on us 50 years from now and they're gonna say, we're the ones who hit that U-turn from going down Coon Avenue that the old folks was trying to take us to going down the block of empowerment. And we done bought back the block and it's empowerment everywhere and you can hear it. Anytime your youth is talking like that, then you already know that you done had an impact. And that's what we've been doing. We've been making impacts daily daily we done got rid of all that sucker energy that they try to put on us all that i'm glad you whooped my ass thank you for whooping my ass on edmund pettis bridge that bullshit we done got rid of all that and we done brought in a new deck stronger than ever making our mark yes indeed and it ain't stopping we ain't quitting we got a lot of work to do and my brothers and sisters are putting in that work so you see the shift you can feel the shift on our side let's talk about the shift on the other side see the dominant society They've been waiting for us to show up, but they didn't want it to happen. If you ever wonder why, they gave Martin Luther King, Fred Hampton, Kathleen Cleaver, Asada Shakur, Tupac Shakur, so much strife and so much hell in their lives is because they knew that they were gonna raise up this era of us. That's what the dominant society feared. Y'all know, I say we are our ancestors best dreams and we are the dominant society's worst nightmare they knew we were coming 
They knew. And everything that you see right now, from reparations to black empowerment, is based upon our elders and our ancestors putting us on game. I'm talking about the Dr. Claude Andersons. I'm talking about the Neely Fullers. I'm talking about the Dr. Francis Quest Wellsings. I'm talking about all of that. They knew that we was learning. They knew that we was coming back for everything they owe. So they ran game. So they tried to hustle. So they tried to throw out every little person to interfere with us. And none of that shit has worked. There isn't a trick in the trick bag that has worked. I told you, they scratching up their fingers right now. Why? It's because they reaching in that trick bag and ain't shit in it. They done threw the minorities at us, reject. They done threw the old folks at us, reject. They done threw the people of color at us, reject. Race soldiers, reject. We got a plan for everything. When they get here, we'll be waiting on them. We A1 right now. Exceptional. And with us being exceptional, and with us being on code, they ain't got no choice but to send out little dog whistles. Yeah, did y'all see that Jane Elliott lady? And y'all know we've been calling her out for a long time. Yeah, Jane Elliott, Tim Wise, nah, fuck no. All they are are the nice playing supremacists. They're the soft supremacists. Well, that's soft supremacists in public. Behind closed doors, they're the hard supremacists who talk just as worse as anybody. But in front of us, they try to make it look like they're our ally. Remember, they have somebody to play a role in every corner of society. I always say, black alpha. I say that in the system of supremacy, everybody has a job title. Some people might have to play the CEO. Some people might have to play the teacher. Some people might have to play the janitor, but they all serve supremacy. And Jane Elliott and Tim Wise, their job is to play the friendly supremacist. The one that makes you think everything's good. The one that makes you think that they're calling out supremacy. Watch out for the supremacist who fake calls out supremacy. All that is meant is to rock you to sleep with confusion. Yes, she'll come out there and say, I believe that we need to just be nice to the blacks. She'll say that shit all day long. And then she'll turn around and say, I don't support reparations. You can always tell how somebody feels about us by if they genuinely, and I'm talking about with your time, energy, effort, your blood, sweat, and tears, support reparations. Not saying you support it, not claiming you support it, and then trying to block it. If you really put it on the line for reparations, then I can tell if you support it. But guess what? Have y'all seen anybody? Let me ask y'all that. Have y'all seen anybody outside of FBA that genuinely has put it on the line for reparations? Not talk about the shit. I'm talking about somebody who with their track record has proven that they're about reparations for us. Hell no, I can't name one. And like I tell people, I'm spotting you the whole fucking earth, all 7 billion human beings and you can't tell me one out of 7 billion that has proven to us that they genuinely support our reparations claim. So that's a motherfucker who is hiding that they support it. Jane Elliott came out and told you she don't support it. So how the hell could she play fake W ally woman well, she done came out and said she don't support reparations for us. She said, give it to the Native Americans. Now, mind you, foundational black Americans are the Native Americans. But when she says Native Americans, oh, no, no, -uh, no, no, no. She talking about Pocahontas. That's who she's talking about. She's talking about reservations. She's talking about the people who have already got reparations. This very fact that they keep telling us we're not going to give y'all reparations until we give it to people who've already got reparations. I mean, that's a motherfucker who ain't even trying to clean their lie up. They just throwing any motherfucking thing they can. But she's came out and said openly, she does not support reparations for us. She supports it for the natives. That's what she has said. But yes, she turns around and acts like she supports our reparations claim, our independent claim, our empowerment claim, but she's openly saying she doesn't. Which one the fuck is it? I know Jane Elliott is 442 years old. I know her memories is about as bad as Joe Biden's. I get it. But goddamn, remember what you said and how you said it. But that brings me all the way back to what I was saying about us passing it down to the youth. Now, mind you, we still working. We still grinding. We are in our primes, but we got to have a hundred year plan because the dominant society has an a hundred year plan. So I'm going to play you a clip of Mrs. Jane Elliott, Mrs. Anti-Black Supremacist in Hiding. She, <laughs> I ain't never did that one before. God damn, that shit funny as fuck. She's sitting there talking to young W's about supremacy but she's using all type of dog whistles. Now I know I'm talking to the certified hundred, so I don't even have to say it because I know y'all gonna pick it up in exactly what she's trying to do. And y'all gonna see through everything that she's trying to say. You know that she's not talking to us. You know she's not talking to them about getting their act together. She's talking to them about getting their supremacy together. 
She's making it sound like she's going on some type of humanity. Be nice to the blacks because she does that all the time. She has this whole, we need to be nice to the blacks campaign. But when you peel back that layer, you see supremacy underneath. And really what she's saying is, this is how y'all need to be prepared to handle the blacks. Remember when Joe Biden went out there and he said, y'all ain't black and this country is gonna be Latinos. Y'all remember that? What he was really trying to say is that this is how we have to deal with them in the future. Supremacy is always trying to prep their babies. And what is a baby supremacist? BS, yes, BS. So they're always trying to take their little BS and pat their little BS on the head and feed their little BS some Brussels sprouts and mashed potatoes. And in the meantime, they're telling them, this is how you're gonna have to handle the blacks when you get older. When we were younger, we had to do it this way. See, we could lie to the civil rights era. We could whoop their ass and they would still thank us for it. But these certified honey, they not fucking around. These certified hunters is coming back for all the money. And you're gonna grow up in a world where you're gonna have to run that goddamn check, little Billy and Bob and Sally. But guess what? If you listen to me now, you might stand a chance because they know that they gonna have to deal with these young brothers and sisters that we just heard on that panel. They know they're going to have to deal with all of the certified honey up tomorrow because it's been proven they ain't fucking with the certified honey right now. And we're going to be winning for a long time. So what's next? You send out Jane Elliott. She comes out with her camouflage on, acts like she's giving them some type of humanitarian thing. But in reality, she's saying this is how you deal with supremacy tomorrow because it's evidently clear supremacy of today ain't working because these black folks is too foundational and these black folks is too certified. Listen. To change. White folks, you gotta change because within 30 years, you will be a numerical minority in the United States of America. And you had better prove, pray, pray to whoever you pray for, to or for, that people of color are not going to get even with us and treat us the way we have treated them. If you, can't think of, if you can't think of any other reason for treating people like equal human beings, think of that one. Because what you do today is creating the future. I don't think you want the kind of future that you have provided for people in the present. Yep, seen through it. First off, y'all notice she said people of color? Slid that in there, right? People of color, you notice that shit? And then what she said? She said, y'all are going to have to change. Y'all think she's saying change by being humanitarian? You think she's saying change by being nice, by being a good human? Or do you think she's saying we gonna have to change our supremacist tactics? All that Donald Trump MAGA in the street shit? Nah, we gonna have to be more covert with it. We gonna have to be more hidden. That's a dog whistle. That's an old ass supremacist dog whistle. And she's telling them, you gonna have to change the way that you approach the scenario because these black folks ain't going for it. And I know they kids ain't going for it. Now what? That's what they are trying to say. That's the dog whistle. And remember, they're always out here saying this numerical thing. They've all been saying that. That's like the new push we've been hearing, right? Joe Biden said it, she's saying it. It's like this numerical thing. It's gonna be a numerical minority. They keep talking about how they're gonna be the numerical minority. If it's about humanity and it's about you love black people, then how come you gotta wait until you the minority to do it? You can do that right now today. You ain't gotta wait. I don't wake up and say, I'm gonna be a nice person because I'm the minority in the neighborhood because I got the numerical disadvantage. You keep throwing in this numerical disadvantage and you keep talking about humanity at the same time when those things are not mutually exclusive. You could do that right here today. So don't tell me that ain't no dog whistle. You're really saying is that we gonna be outnumbered and we've been supremacists while we've had the advantage. And when we ain't got the advantage, the numbers are gonna have to change. Trust and believe, when the dominant society is not dominant in terms of numbers, you gonna see a complete role reversal in their tactics. That's why you got the one who wants to do it overt, the one who wants to do it covert. The overt one, he's stingy, and he said, I ain't changing, fuck that. I don't care if we got five numbers. And then you got the Joe Bidens and the Democrats, and they say, whoa, hold on now. We gonna be at a disadvantage. Let's act like we're their friends. And that's exactly what Jane Elliott is doing. Somebody better come and get their goddamn supremacist grandma. She ain't nothing but an old ass lady that been invited to a couple cookouts and now she's trying to tell black folks what it is. As a matter of fact, she's the same W that you seen back in the day watching everybody spreads with water hose. She is the grandmother of these Karens that be calling the police on brothers and sisters and getting them harmed by race soldiers. That's all she is. And black folks was loving her, weren't they? 
Man, when she first came out, black folks was, woo, y'all see Jane? Oh, that's Grandma Jane now. Did somebody call her Grandma Jane? Somebody did. Who was it, man? Tell me, do y'all remember? Who the hell said that? Somebody said, Jane, I, I think it was Jada Pinkett or somebody. They was like, Jane, you gangster. Using all this bullshit ass hibbity bebop fucking terms and shit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was her. It was one of them. And they was all on her. She said the same exact thing black folks been saying for years. You ain't gotta go to Jane Elliott. You can go to your damn parents and they'll tell you about supremacy. Your grandma been saying the same shit for 30 years and you didn't want to hear it. But when it come from a W, all of a sudden it's valuable and black folks started jumping up and down. Tim Wise, same thing. He'll come around, say some shit about supremacy, and he ain't saying nothing that a black person ain't said. He ain't saying nothing that our family members ain't said. You can go to the goddamn dinner table and hear realer stories than that. And a lot of black folks was out here bucking their eyes, wasn't they? They was bucking. They eyes was bucking all over the goddamn place, looking like a goddamn round clock, just doing circles up and down and around. They were treating Tim Wise and Jane Elliott like they were Nilly Fuller and Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Yes, the fuck they were. They was tripping. Tap dancing, coon walking, every goddamn thing. We teach black history in the schools as if it started with slavery. I'm not a white woman, I'm a faded black person. My people move far from the equator. And that's the only reason my skin is lighter. That's all any white person is. Because wow. we are our, our great hey. There's no such thing as race. No, there's no such thing as There's one race, there's one race, the human race, and then right. y'all came from the same black women. Man, listen to that shit. They ooh on acting like they heard something so profound. That ain't nothing any black person hasn't been saying for years. They over there acting like that shit done blew their mind. Them be the same people that have sit back and listen to a black scholar and be like, man, I don't really know if that's true now. But let Miss Supremacist Grandma say that shit. I'm telling you, when it come to an old W lady, you see black folks get weak as hell. You seen that shit with the Queen of England, or excuse me, the fake Queen of England. You seen that shit with Betty White, and you see that shit with Jane Elliott. They show up, talk some shit, and black folks start oohing and on just like you just heard right there. All a bunch of counterfeits. But that shit don't impress us. Hell nah. We ain't got that savior in them. See, a lot of them folks, they'll talk that pro-black and they'll put up the fist, but they be needing that savior like a motherfucker. They still got shackles in them. They still got a whole gang of shackles. You look past all that shit, all that fake pro-black shit they be talking, and you see nothing but shackles. They got shackles all up and down them. Fuck that. That shit don't impress us. And that's what they was mad about. We calling her out the same way yesterday as we are right here today. And it ain't changed one bit. We know a fake and we know an op when we see one, and she's an op. They was mad at us too, boy. They was like, how can y'all say that about her? Easy. Just say the shit. Call it for what the fuck it is. No lies. Just like old girl. What was old girl name? I think she played uh, Maxine on Living Singles. I don't even know her motherfucking name. Y'all see her bucking her eyes over reparations ice cream from Ben and Jerry? Did y'all see that shit? What's the difference between... Is she from America? Where is she from? Is she a homegrown coon or a tether coon? I don't know. Y'all let me know. But the same way she was bucking her eyes and tap dancing for some fucking reparations ice cream, that's the same way that big old buck tether dude was dancing over watermelons and fried chicken. It's the same shit, making a mockery out of our culture for some food. This is what we saying. These folks are getting regulated and tossed the fuck out the house. Bucking for some fucking ice cream, reparations ice cream and shit. Tap dancing. I'm telling you, you put a butter biscuit, some catfish nuggets, or some Ben and Jerry's ice cream, you don't know what the hell these people will do. Shameless people give you shameless shit, and shameless people get their ass tossed the fuck out in the yard. Because we understand that an op is gonna come to you in a whole lot of different forms. An op is gonna come to you dressed as a friend, an op is gonna come to you dressed as a grandma, dressed as a professor, dressed as an elder, but when you peel back them layers, and you see past all that shit like we have been known to do, then you know exactly who's real and who's fake, who's certified, who's counterfeit, who's artificial, and who's authentic. And we are the most authentic. So at the end of the day, as certified foundational black Americans move through this process, one thing we know for certain is that when we stay tight, when we stay on game and on point, we get things done. When we call motherfuckers out, we regulate them and we G-check them, we get shit done. And when we speak our mind, say it with our chest and keep it 100 we put the game on smash that part all the way so they know 
any op that pulls up, anybody who runs interference, anybody who tries to knock us off our path, anybody who tries to take us in a different direction, they can't do it. One, because they ain't got the strength. Two, because they ain't got the energy. And three, because they ain't got the power. All the strength, the energy, and the power resides on this side, the certified side, where we at. So let me tell you this, and I'm gonna say this real clear. Let me put it for the whole world. Anybody who's got a problem with certified foundational black Americans, anybody trying to stop us from getting our money, anybody trying to stop us from fulfilling our destiny, which is being exceptional and excellent to the core, I need them to listen real close, and I'm gonna give it to you in that real certified black society translation. And that is, fucking op as a staff, record label and as a motherfucking crew and if you want to be down with an op then fuck you too on one all right y'all this has been another episode of the black alpha cast i am black alpha i appreciate the love the respect you know how we do we all in this together and we ride together we rise together and everybody knows that so any attempt that they try to make to break us in half they are always going to fail and they are going to fail miserably we have made an existence out of being exceptional we've made an existence out of being excellent but more than that we've made an existence out of loving each other by seeing your brother and giving him your helping hand and by seeing your sister and giving her a helping hand and that's what i love the most about all of us we are true to ourselves but more so we true to to that FBA family tree and it doesn't matter what part of that tree you from we rise together and we bang out and everybody hates that shit but that's good because the more they hate the more we show love and the more we show love the more we win and that's why we winning right now big facts we so on fire right now and we growing day to day so i gotta thank everybody for the love and i appreciate that i can personally contest to the passion i can personally contest to the admiration i can personally contest to the honor because i have all of that for all of y'all there's nothing better than this fba block party there is no followers and none of that this is a family a family and i mean that for my fba certified soul this is a family and we move you mess with one of us you mess with us all never think that you're gonna mess with one of the cousins and the other cousins ain't gonna show up hell nah you mess with one of the cousins the whole family gonna show up we're gonna light your ass up so understand that and once we put that out to the world that we stand as a collective and we unite the city and step to the world as a weapon they already know what's next and we already know what's next reparations cash payments empowerment all at the same damn time because we can do that i put my heart in this i put my soul in this it's because there is nobody else i would rather experience this thing called life with other than y'all my family so salute to y'all certified all the way live it's been good chopping it up and breaking it down the roast continues and we're gonna continue to roast and we're gonna continue to put that foot on the gas 100 miles an hour no fucks given getting what's ours taking what belongs to us with no compromise uncut no filters that's the way we do it that's the only way we can do it being nice being happy we save that for our family the rest of the world gonna have to catch wreck you ain't gotta like us you ain't gotta respect us but you gonna deal with us and when you deal with foundational black americans you only got one option and that is to bow down yes indeed black alpha network certified two hours of that straight fire but y'all stay good it's been great chopping it up with y'all tonight as usual they know how we do they know how the fuck we do we get down we get down the real way all the way but y'all stay super good i hope everybody's living right we moving into the next step and we're gonna keep it going we're gonna keep the fire pushing pushing that line we're gonna work on that reparations op list too and i'm gonna need the whole family it's gonna be a big rollout we're gonna lock that up so stay tuned that's gonna be a real big one we all together we're gonna put together a big ass list and anybody who's off code anybody who's running interference trust and believe that summer jam screen gonna get their name plastered on that motherfucker so we see him yes we do so y'all stay good all the way live certified black society black alpha network around the world and gonna light it up see y'all on the other end stay good stay dangerous stay lethal we got that smoke that don't nobody want because they know they can't handle it with that part i'm out remember black is beautiful and beautiful is always black One love.